All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. It is a bi-weekly horror hotfix where you get to show all of the spookiest speedruns around. Today's theme is kind of weird because it is simply no. That is the theme for today, it is the word no. Uh, what does that mean? It means that we're going to be having a couple of classic horror games, but with a couple of exceptions in that. Both of them will be uh, kind of limiting our runners, uh, merely with the word no. Uh, we'll be seeing how kind of interesting challenges we have on board with that. Uh, before we go fully into that, I just want to say that SGDQ 2022 on-site volunteer applications are now open until April 20th. If you're interested in becoming a camera ops volunteer or volunteer in any sort of position, uh, feel free to go to gamesdonequick.com for more information. And I hope that you're all having a wonderful day so far. So the real question is, what is no exactly? Well, with the games we have listed today, there's some very interesting ways you can be beating them. Uh, we'll have our runners explain a lot more, but just consider that, and it's kind of fun to see what kind of challenges we can take up on ourselves in various games. Anyway, to open things up, we'll be going to Dino Crisis with Punchy. Take it away. Hello everyone, I'm Punchy, and this will be a run of Dino Crisis No Weapon. I like this theme. No is my favorite word in the English language. It's very versatile. It's a good word. I'm going to start in three, because this game starts with a cutscene, so I can explain stuff then. Three, two, one, video games. I just my auto splitter. I have that running in the background. You can't see it. Don't worry about it. So Dino Crisis okay. will be this running No Weapon. Uh, Resident Evil games, and this is sort of considered a Resident Evil derivative, normally has a knife-only type category for minimalism's sake, but Dino Crisis has no knife. But instead, the entire game can be completed without firing a single bullet. Not a one. And this category is called No Weapon, because you use no weapon. You may be wondering how we deal with certain elements of the game that seem like they require shooting. Well, that's the premise. We'll get to that. Unfortunately, okay. cutscenes in Dino Crisis are not skippable, <laughs> and you start Forget with this. It. Resetting this game is fun. This, this is really fun voice right. acting. It's clean. The voice acting is actually very good in this game. It's probably the best localized of like the classic survival horror games. That door okay, animation basically got instantly skipped I'll because it was uh, recently allowed to run control. with a mod that removes the, the door animations by speeding them up dramatically, which cuts like a solid 20 minutes off the runtime. I figured the hotfix viewers would appreciate that. Uh, sadly, this mod cannot skip cutscenes because they are tied to the length of the audio files. Let me guess. This is some of your handiwork, right? Hmm. The brass is still warm. These guards were shooting at something very recently. Of her hair, Regina's, or mine? My hair's so also great. Fighting? No, this, this... This wasn't much of a fight. I mean, I kind of like these it. I'm very vain. I'm having one of those days. Diced. Whatever they were shooting at, it's a nice time. There, <laughs> right through the steel fence. Also, I already saw uh, no, a fitting nice pun where it's Dino Crisis. Very Dino Crisis. We still need oh. to figure out what happened. I always here. pronounce it like it's Continue one word, like I'm area. talking about a Greek philosopher or something. Dinocracy. Oh, I started doing that as a result of you. <laughs> Dinocracy. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's way more fun to say it that way when you start doing it. All right, run in there, grab a key, get another cutscene. The run does like get away from the cutscene barrage eventually, I promise. But it's got a bit. It's got this kind of opening. Some speed runs are just like that. How's the progress going with that security system? Also, while we're in the uh, beginning here, we can actually talk about some of the basics. Uh, any reason why we're in Japanese? Yes, actually, it's a very silly reason. Uh, you might think, oh, you know, the language, or the text, or nothing of the sort. One puzzle is slightly different in Japanese. There's like a box-pushing puzzle in about the middle point of the run. There's one less box to push in the Japanese version. I don't know why. I caught the last part of your conversation. And the Japanese version came out first, so technically a box was added to that puzzle in the English versions of the game. Let's head outside. Maybe they take it is too easy. I guess. It doesn't really make the puzzle any more complicated. This is on the PC version of the game. Dino Crisis has a PC port, it works pretty well. Uh, it is standard to play with the Rebirth patch. 
for stability yeah, reasons. In fact, it's like required if you run the game on PC. It's not merely optional. You have to. You have to install that. It had to be the consistent runtime is good for fair competition, but it also means you can get nice, okay, clean let's move on. Uh, appearance out of the game. You know, PS1 games are very characteristic for their like wobbly textures and what have you. That can be resolved on the PC version of this game, which is very nice. You can get a nice, clean-looking dinocrisis. Solve a puzzle, streamer. Immediately hit the wrong button, streamer. There we go. This puzzle gets a lot easier when you finally learn that every single one is always the same order. Oh yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah, I just memorized always, the inputs. Uh, red, blue, green, white. Which yeah, at like a certain point I think it's like that one's like left. Uh, it's like left, right, left. Or, all right, sorry, center, right, center, right. I've never actually thought about that before, but yeah, they all the, the colors yeah. are always in the same order, aren't they? Yeah, if you ever get lost, just. Always the same order. Every time you find that puzzle, they just sort of mildly change it. Right, so this is the first point of divergence from regular any percent. The first dinosaur encounter, I might be slightly ahead of the cutscene here. His camera angles and door cutscenes give mad Resident Evil vibes. They are the same company within the same time period made by the same people. <laughs> yes. It's basically considered a Resident Evil game. Like, it's in, it's super in that lineage. Anyway, first dinosaur encounter. This is no weapon, so we're going to run away from it. Normally, ye would fight this. For you see, in any percentage, this cutscene showing that the dinosaurs can, in fact, give chase when not killed transpires, and that is slower than killing the dinosaur, which is the first, like, major divergence point from no weapon, which is that dinosaurs can and will chase you through rooms in this category. Get a teachable moment there from the video game. It's actually nice to do no weapon for that, because trying to kill that first dinosaur is quite random. Like, dinosaur health is just super random. It, it varies within a massive range. But just leaving is consistent, so that's nice. You don't you don't this. reset this category as much to the very first enemy in the game. Dinosaur. That's a good one. So. For that reason, I might actually be more inclined to recommend no weapon as sort of like a the, the target category to learn the game for the first time. Because all the skills transfer. Head over to the control room and we'll sort out this whole situation. Right. To the control room. I mean, I know where that is. Cutscene weapons allowed? Yeah, if she fires it in a cutscene, it's fine. With the we the player cannot fire bullet. Another fun part about uh, no weapon is you can make the the classic uh, like you ever watch a movie and it's like no animals are harmed in the making of this movie. No dinosaurs harmed in the making of this run. Exactly. What's our status? You may observe the this weapons. This security system is a snap for me. Real amateur. But cannot stuff. use them. So we have rendezvoused exactly with Ricardo to in you the control room. He is currently logging on. He will spend the entire game yeah. logging on. I couldn't believe it. I just hope he's still alive. Anyway, our first priority is to complete the mission. This is all he will do. What we ought to do is just call in the chopper and get off this death trap. That's a great idea, but Cooper has the radio and he's missing. Hey, what's with this monitor? That's the security monitor for the underground area. The camera's offline. So I take it that means power still hasn't been restored to the area. And that's our goal exactly. for now. They must have that area wired to a different power system than the ground level. Restore power we can investigate to that the, area the after we basement our level. Of the ground level. Or okay. underground, as they call then it. I'll take care of the shutters that Looking at Chad right now, it's being asked. How you big is the time in. difference between no weapon and any percent? And then rendezvous back here. Uh, God, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll... it's... Yeah. Approximately a minute or something like that. I want yeah, I know it's not a huge difference, actually. It's not as large as you would expect.
collect that disc, that's the DDK disc. That's the fundamental unit of puzzle solving in this video game. We can open this in advance. Thankfully, things like locker codes and door codes and things like that are not randomized per playthrough, so if you know what they are, you can break the sequence slightly. And this is the other mechanic, the laser grid. Already? If that you turn these things on and off, Thanks. you can prevent dinosaurs from following you into different rooms and trap them in places and what have you. We're mostly just going to turn them off and run past everything. It is generally not like speed advantageous to attempt to trap dinosaurs in rooms with these things. That's some, yep, those are, mm -hmm, that's a position. Get me out of here. Dinosaur position is like completely random in this game. They do whatever they like. You also got like a weird auto aim if you're like, within range. It's kind of weird. Out the front we go. This is what I needed the key for to access the front of the building. For there is other disc. Now we have what we need to access the upper floor. Door skip on stairs makes a very jarring noise. It goes like... Bleh. to this one is head. These are all like word puzzles where you sort of have to use like the key as a cipher, but the answers are fixed. Are you from the You know, actually I'm kind of wondering, uh, aren't the DDKs I, being yes, yes, I kanji am. if it's the Japanese version or do they just- No, it's just, it's English words in all versions. Oh. I imagine that's why the English puzzles What's are like, I don't know, what are you harder about? for a Japanese player, I guess. Yeah. They're not they're not that difficult for an English speaking player because for for a lot of them if you if you get the first couple of letters you can kind of like wheel of fortune guess the password but I imagine a Japanese player would probably have more difficulty with that method. But the puzzles are completely identical between the two versions otherwise. That is not com that is not entirely uncommon for like games of this type. Get the L key card. We are now holding the L. Also, there is a T-Rex now. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The method here, wait patiently. And then go. Or get bonked, whatever. That's fine. Getting bonked like that does a slight amount of damage. Not significant, but not zero. I've unlocked the shutters near the entrance. One more thing. I just caught a glimpse of something on the monitor that looked human. It should be somewhere near the front of the training room. So check there first. We have a new goal with a new map location. Not that we can really pass that. Solution to this one is newcomer. The keys get more complex as the game goes on. Yeah, I mentioned that. I'm like thinking about a version of this game that had like Japanese style word puzzles instead. How would you even do that though? Like the languages don't. Whatever. That's, that's only I care about that sort of thing. Also, I like the DDKs and how complex they get, but then the passwords are like the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. It's like, oh, you need to, uh, you know, look at the line, remove this many characters, replace this, and then the password's his name. Whenever it flashes danger on the screen like that, that's actually a quick time event, but this is like before quick time events were invented. <laughs> so they have a really odd system where it just says Gale, danger alive. on the screen, and that means bash every button on your controller as Boy, many times as you can. Wizard. No it's pretty lizard. forgiving. You it's don't have to match like sword. particularly hard or anything, but still, it's like sword. press any button, Look, all of them, really all at once. It's fine. This whole mission has gone sour. Hey, it's always eat or be eaten out in the battlefield, no matter who or what you're up against. And in fact, that one, uh, you get a pass on that Anywhere one even if you fail it. <laughs> but failing it is slower. I've got to hook up with Rick again. My radio is dead, and he's the only one who can fix it. 
I don't know what DDK stands for, actually. I never took a note of that. Same. I know it has the word disc in it. Cut through the office. We're going to come back here later. Okay, there was a chance a, a dinosaur encounter could spawn in that hallway on the first time through. It's quite rare, but it does happen. Did not happen this time, so we're going to get it on the way back. An element of light RNG. Essentially self-correcting. Get battery. Fuse puzzle solved. That one will come up a few times. This game loves that puzzle for some reason. It's always the same total answer. That you, Regina? Yeah. So, do we have power yet? We're in the green, thanks to you. Look, I need you to come back here. There's something I have to talk to you about. And now we head back to the control room. Nano Crisis is like actually surprisingly linear in that it literally directs you to your objective with like map markers. It's pretty convenient. Also, I guess now we're getting to our uh, next major game mechanic. Yep, we're getting there, but first I'm gonna get jumped by a dinosaur. This doesn't count as damage taken despite the incredible amount of blood pouring out of Regina. Regina has a lot of blood. Back to the control room we go. And yes, this what is where we get our next major element to the run, which is that these two, Gail and Rick, will argue with each other about what to do next and then leave Regina Flight to pick which quick. one she thinks is the Not best sure thing to do. Something. Rick, open the shutter to the underground In area. almost all cases, Gale's plan is the fastest one because he's sort of like the tough and direct route, which members. naturally has an overlap with cool. Quick. Yeah, or it might be Tom. He infiltrated this facility, posing as one of the researchers. Can you pinpoint the signal? Only the last choice in the game affects the ending. It's coming from outside of the building. To the east of the rear entrance, we can't... Everything else only affects, like, relatively minor things. Look, and in fact, this first choice only affects the order in which you do them. The you have to do both eventually ground. anyway. It could be the dog. What but it is faster to do about? the basement He's choice first, which is help. Gale's. We don't leave our own behind. There's actually a category of this game called Reverse trap. Percent, just for the sake of taking of Rick's options and you. doing his stuff. Don't bother. I'm willing to take that. Because otherwise, it doesn't get any. <laughs> his his like route doesn't get any play That's in speedrun categories. Not mine. At the very least, I think Rick always gets the final decision. Sure. Even in the uh, the, the best ending, you just sort of do so that. Best and then, ending. Yeah. You handle your things your way. I'll handle my things my way. That punk is really starting to get on my nerves. Regina, I'm heading out to investigate the underground. Yes, conveniently, Gale's options are always the top option, so you can always just mash through these prompts. Proceed to victory. My favorite dinosaur is coming up. Compies! Look at them! They're baby. They actually do still attack you, though. <laughs> they are not devoid of threat. We collect two med kits here, that will come in handy later. We collect an ID card. Look at them. Look at those tiny babies. They're baby. Dr. Kirk? Low poly animals. Hey, wait! Oh, this game so much we've heard it described as what if Resident Evil but dinosaurs. Yeah, pretty much. It's it was made by the same people. It's a Capcom game. Regina, are you there? What's going on? I have a positive. Even so, I think it's even sure of a Capcom game made by like the original Resident Evil team too. Yeah, like it's it's the exact same development team. I can see an elevator from here. Maybe I can use that to go down from the first floor. Like 100% carries like all the same sensibilities. 
on account of like literally having been made by the same people. Right, that's all we can do in the basement. For now. So now our goal becomes get into the underground via the elevator. But first, in order to do that, we have to go outside. Loop back around past that guy. Hope that guy doesn't eat my face on the way back out. Get a fingerprint scanner, that's a puzzle item that gets some use. Collect DDK, please don't eat my face. Thank you. Alright, so we're going to take this corpse's fingerprint. That's a very morbid statement. This is part of a whole puzzle you have to do where you have to find the correct fingerprint by using like a beeping pager to locate the right corpse because the corpse starts beeping. But the correct corpse does not change. So now that we have his fingerprint, we can use it to rewrite the ID card we picked up. This will be useful for us later. But we're doing it now. What time is it for me? It's like 3 a.m., my dude. I am tired. But I do it for the people. The people. <laughs> I like being on the hotfix. I make, I make time. I create time. It's a fun Thank time you. to have. I found Tom. And? I was too late. He didn't make it. I think in any scenario, by the way, Tom just, like, dies, so it doesn't even matter if you yeah. find him. Tom is always dead. It doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> he <laughs> dies if you go there the first. Tom. He dies if you don't. Tom cannot survive. Right, the position of these guys is super random. All enemy position in this game is, like, super random. Also, fun fact, uh, some of you uh, more observant chatters may have noticed that Punchy's holding his pistol. So the, uh, the pterodactyl here is gonna help us with no weapon by removing it. The pistol is now gone, it is on the elevator shaft, and it is going to stay there for the entire rest of the game. That is not moving. Pay attention to that, it'll come back up later. I like pointing out a cool detail with it. But now I, I'm completely disarmed, no weapon. No weapons, no weapons. Zero weapon. Collect this crane card, we will need that later. is a slightly bizarre pipe puzzle where you have to press colored buttons in the correct order to lower the pieces. I think there might be multiple solves to this puzzle, but doing them in the order of RGB, RGB works, so that's the one I do because it's easiest to remember. The real enemy in this game is indeed the puzzles. It's a it's a surprisingly puzzle heavy heavy video game. The only thing I have to do is speak words correctly for roughly an hour twenty. On that note, I'm going to take a drink of water. This run is on the longer end. I came prepared. Once again, I am being picked up by a pterodactyl. This happens twice. They do this twice. Also, since it's going to come up, this doesn't count as a weapon because the dinosaur is trying to use it as a weapon on us. Wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. He quite literally dove into the fan. Now we're going to, now that we've powered up, we can take this shaft down. And this is cool. I like pointing this out. You know how my gun landed on the elevator as it, as uh, in the cutscene? The gun comes with you down to the basement. You can pick it up again when you're in this screen later. It moves with the, lo it moves through the loading screen. I think that's a nice detail. I like pointing that out. Very much, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't need it. This is no weapon. No. Even cosmetically, it would actually be slower to pick it up. More yeah, than just like the animation. Prompt. 
Crane puzzle. Oops. Hook. Left, up, release, down, hook. Okay. Also, I guess jokingly for a moment, while well, I like the crane puzzles, what kind of facility would design their crane system to work like this? Yeah, like a COD game, right? At least people have jobs and they move these things. Every single time I run this game on stream, everyone looks at my split names for this and like, they, they go like, why is your split called like H. Lugur? It's like, it's because I have the solutions to the crane puzzle written, but in like code. So it just looks like a random sequence of vowels to people. I also was asked again, uh, which route is faster. The route will always be uh, Gale outside the ending, which we take Rick. Yeah, only the final choice affects the ending, and in that one instance, it's faster to do Rick. On the other foot, even with the final choice, like, I don't think there's a lot of separation if you're trying to go for the good ending, because you still kind of get the same general thing. I almost got command grabbed by a dinosaur, and that'd be quite bad. There's like a status effect in this game called bleed. When you get hit by certain attacks, bleed is quite bad. It draws enemy aggro, it slowly drops your health, it's a huge pain to deal with, and you only start the game with one hemostat, so I can only afford to eat like one of those. That being said, this run is still like relatively safe to complete in a marathon setting, because this game has like super generous continues. You can continue 30 times. Really hard to run through 30 continues. That keypad does not wrap around. I tried to wrap around. Right, moving on. Collect the DDK. Right, untimely as this may be, I'm about to commit a crime. Uh, killing the scientist is faster. Normally the goal is to, like, extract the poison out of the room. Uh, however, it is fastest to first create, make the poison level peak so that the scientist dies. So that you don't get a cutscene when you walk in the room, because now he's dead. It's kind of, it's kind of grim. Well, it's speed running is what it is. I accept no further questions. It's not a weapon, it's an experiment. Also, I guess, strangely enough, if you want to, you can also poison the dinosaur. I guess you can, huh? I never tried to do that. You you wouldn't really want to because it's pattern? slower, but... Oh, I guess it's, it's kind of funny. In a grim way, I suppose. Yeah, it, like, that murdering that guy is just faster. Which is grim, to say the least. Two color to top. To blank to top, mixed. And that's the solve. Poison doesn't count as a weapon? No. It's an experiment, not a weapon. Puzzles thus solved in the basement area. We can now use our R key card on this, but we need two people, so we have to call Gail over to help us. Regina? I finally made it to the entrance. The game the prompts you lab. for this to be like, do you want to invite Gail over? But as, as far as I recall, like you have to. Just so like, do you want to progress the game? It. Yes, no. Sit tight. I'll be right there. I feel like she, if she wanted to really try, she could stretch What's across. That? Here, take this. Ready? Do like the biggest splits. Okay, I think she can do it. On three. One, two. I don't know. Three. It's pretty wide. Well, Regina's really like super tall. She's like six foot something. Damn. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like from where? Like where? what? Is that like in an official bio or something? I think so, yeah. 
It's weird, a lot of horror game characters actually have their heights confirmed, and uh, Regina's super tall. I think it's confirmed in two. We witnessed time things occurring there. Why? This operation is taking way too long. A mysterious already. energy. Warning. The emergency system has been activated. Emergency lockdown in progress. PS1 Gale face. What's going on? Oh, Kirk must have tripped off the security system. That fool. What's your status, Regina? I'm reading an emergency lockdown in your section. We're trapped inside here. Kirk must have triggered it off. We didn't touch anything. Rubbing my eyes. <laughs> can you clear it? I'll see what I can do. What's wrong with this thing? Cool it, Gale. Gale is we'll mad at computers. I sympathize. Right, let's solve computer yeah. problems with percussive maintenance. Or well, really, it's more like, I don't know. I want to say pipe dream, but that's not really what this puzzle is. Regardless, it is solved like that. Warning. The emergency lockdown has been bypassed. You have 10 minutes until this section is sealed off. We'd better get moving. We've bypassed the door lock and we're on our way out. That's if Regina is six foot, how tall is Gale? Is with really tall? Because Gale is taller. <laughs> Don't sweat it. I'll take I'd make him like what? Six foot three? That's huge. Brilliant plan, fearless leader, but I have a better one. These readouts tell me there's an emergency escape hatch in the dog's private quarters. You should be able to make a clean break. This is another Rick Gale diversion sure? point where Gale is yeah. definitely faster, because your choices are embark on this long, arduous, very labored process of like breaking into the Get escape it. hatch. You can't crack the code before the or just rush. running through a bunch tried. of rooms. Running through a bunch of rooms is faster. I don't. Chalking. What about you, Regina? Make your choice. That's a save game prompt I'm getting when I leave that room, by the way. Some rooms just automatically prompt you to save the game every time you go through them, because this game doesn't have, like, fixed... like, saving locations. Like objects in the world, it's just rooms. That dinosaur just napping in the corner. <laughs> He's just trying to live, man. <laughs> that's that's this. Okay, it's a very it's a highly random run, right? Because of things like that. Dinosaurs can sometimes be just standing Gale. directly in the path yeah, of where you need to be, guy, and guy. sometimes they can just be sleeping so in the this corner. Must be the yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it be just like napping and it didn't even wake up. You get around, don't you? Just like a rat. And you got this whole island That's set up a uh, Apparently, I do look like six feet, apparently, well, by the way. No, Gail's definitely taller, like you can tell. Like, Kirk's also really tall. <laughs> They're all six feet. They're all so tall. They sent someone after me. The streamer is five foot five, chat. I'm very small. <laughs> Yeah, they got me beat. I'm like five eight. I'd be more than happy to oblige. So what'll it be, genius? Relax, agent. My study is nearing its final stages. Magnificent, isn't it? But I can't leave before I've analyzed the final results. This is our mad scientist type. He's Doctor Kirk. Your results. He I'm only cares about his experiments. So shut up and follow me. Regina, locate the communication facility and call in the extraction job. You can't do this. I have rights. <laughs> I have rights. Property, pal. I suggest you take it up with them. No, they can't do this to me. They deserted me three years ago, and now they want me back. This is preposterous. Preposterous. I love Doctor Kang's voice actor. He's really good. He had fun with it. Shut up. Where's the communication room? It proves that there is a future for British people in voice acting. Take the elevator up from the I'm allowed to make that joke. I need a card to access that <laughs> That's elevator. True. I know you've got one. Hand it over, Doc. 
A future that wouldn't be realized until Xenoblade released, like, many years later. Fine. Also, according to Twitch chat, apparently I'm the same height as Dr. Kirk. So, we're all set then. I'll meet you at the heliport. I too what? can He's have scary. rights. Where are you going? He's clearly I taller. But, oh, whatever. To take care of. Not to scale, we'll I guess. And he's right. wearing like, I don't know, moving. elevator shoes. Unfinished or platform boots. I doubt it. I mean, he did, uh, what's the word? Cause dinosaurs to appear in the modern age. All time you thought punchy neck for seven feet. No. Absolutely, I will not I will not dissuade you of this notion. on the roof we're making contact with the helicopter so we can leave except we're only actually like halfway through the run the game kind of fakes out that this is like the final act it absolutely is not not even close Right, time for fun. Regina, what happened? You know, eventually. I'm a bit busy right now. Do something about it. Direct attack from T-Rex. What's fun about this section is if the T-Rex hits you like dead on, it instantly kills you. So this part's always a bit scary. Yeah. Dang, but I'm just really undressed with nah. And his attacking pattern is actually like slightly random as well. The delay between bites is not fixed. I got through it though, that's okay. He's like a fighting game player. I'll give you the abridged version. Mission complete. Scrub the initial plans and pick us up. I didn't make that look like much. And it's not the craziest this difficult dodges in the life. universe. Like if you've got some time and you can make it work, but if I mess those problem. up, if I'll you mess them up the badly enough, you can just, just instantly die. So it's a little scary. Roger, I'm on my way. Finish that cutscene, take one step backwards, new cutscene. Haha. -ha. It's not even worth taking the time to turn around properly. Backstep into the cutscene. Optimal. Do not Chris's. Right. Off we go. We are now escaping the front of the building to the heliport. To escape. Really enjoy their choice of like a string instrument sample for this one where it just goes. Da -da 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 -da. That. Really trying their hardest. Please don't own me, Pterodactyl. Oh, no, they definitely own me. Okay, that was only slightly owned, it was a minimal amount of own. If I saved it all, if I died it, this game has continues. It would be fine. Do not worry. Yeah, this puzzle, this one right here, this is the difference between the Japanese and the English version. This box puzzle has one less box. That's it. That's the only difference between Japanese and English versions. It is about 10 seconds worth of time save as a consequence of playing on Japanese. That's it. This is all. Speedrunners will, like, play entire games in not native languages. 
to save 10 seconds on a box pushing puzzle. Now, this is another like major branch point actually for no weapon. There's a grenade launcher in this room. It's quite strong. We can't use it. It's no weapon. Have you been paying attention? Keep up, keep up. Which is unfortunate because there's a boss fight coming up. And we can't use a weapon during it. T-Rex. We skipped a cutscene there really fast, but the T-Rex kind of like ate the helicopter we were planning to escape on, and now he wants to eat us. Uh, but we have no weapon. So how do you deal with this scenario? Well, this is one of those fights that sort of uh, where the health bar of the T-Rex is less like a health bar and more like a timer. And dealing damage reduces the timer, but you can just run the clock via a simple method. You know, ever played Ring Around the Rosie before? I love the music with the spike because it's just constantly just him doing the same circle and it just like... I don't know, something about the loop just makes it sound a lot more intense than it actually is. The key is to stay near his butt. But not too close, because his thighs have hitboxes. <laughs> that's like true, that's not a joke. His thighs have hitboxes. Oh yeah, uh, I saw in chat as well. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, Americans get more boxes. Uh, the American version's harder for the puzzle for some reason. They get the, the tougher puzzle. Yeah, they added a box to that puzzle for the American release. I don't know why. Doesn't really make the puzzle harder. You just have to push one more box. This is the only way to win this without firing a bullet. You have to just run the clock via this method. I learned, by the way, you can't actually have the T-Rex like closer to the door. Yeah, no, you can't just stand there. You have to be like, it has to be off camera. Uh, I, I was like, oh, I, what if I like waited by the door? Would that be faster? Like, no, no, <laughs> no. no. Look, I learned that one the hard way as well. thing with that as well is that you can't just like hold upright or whatever to continually spin in a circle and have that work for spinning the T-Rex around because the T-Rex gets like stuck on the wall, it sort of randomly stops and what have you. You have to watch and react to its every move like closely. The chopper's history. How are we gonna get out of here? Calm down. We'll just have to find another way. Ma, oh, come off it. You're never this positive. Huh? What? What happened? adjusting sitting position which is probably messing with the camera framing but I don't care elevator shot we'll have to find another way yes that's probably the, the biggest time difference between no weapon and any percent that fight because ordinarily you know you'd use a gun to clear that fight quicker but in no weapon we have to play ring around the rosy with it for like a minute Euro and PAL versions also house the extra box, yes. It's it's added in English versions, it's just absent from Japanese versions. I could not tell you why. Like, this applies to, okay, so like the PC version that I'm playing right now can actually be either English or Japanese, depending on like what you tell it to be in the launch settings. If you play the game in English, the box is there. If you play it in Japanese, the box is not there. Like, even the same version of the game, the same install of the game, language selection will change the box. There you... that's how it be. Right on, girl. Let's hear it. And one of the odder things as well, um... The game doesn't require you to know a lot of like okay, the puzzles or the notes, but I think um, the note Punchy picked up was like one of the only here. exceptions to yeah. that rule. Oh yeah, yeah you have to it. read that, otherwise you can't I'm advance the, the story. Because uh, the, the thing at this point is that they don't know how Let's to escape. You know, they're like, what do we do? But that note outlines that, oh, there's an escape route through the port. So Regina reads that note and then he, she goes and tells Rick. If you don't read that note, she can't do it. If you don't read the note, it just doesn't let you leave that area. <laughs> There's also two ports. Yeah, there is, isn't there? We came, we came, I don't what know. Ah, this piece of also, yes, you do hear Ichthysis. I am the uh, the showrunner for Speedruns from the Crypt. I am that's, here every two weeks. That's Ichthysis. Gale? 
And there's there's my gun you. still in in the cutscene. <laughs> it's right there. I like how the arrow Pick up. stays on it. it looks Pick like up the gun. Box. What are you doing? No. No. Gun? Not for me. Right. None for me, thanks. The gun didn't get the memo. And it will stay there in that room with its arrow blinking at you every time you go back in it. And you've got to go back in there for at least one thing. And it'll still be there and you can still pick it up, which I think it's impressive that it's so persistent, but no, I'm not picking it up. This is no weapon. What the? This battery's completely dead. This battery is completely dead. I wouldn't say it's dead. It looks more so broken. That's fine. There are many batteries. This is like battery crisis. Rick, take this battery. Perfect. This is all we need to restore the. This is like the only puzzle in the game that you solve by talking to an NPC who then uses the item for you. If you try to use the item yourself, the game tells you no. You cannot use that here. I'll work on the security system. You handle our escape route. And Rick is now about to go log on to computer again. What's funny is that Regina's, like, cannon role inside this, like, weird sort of military operation is that she's the team's weapon specialist. <laughs> but she, she's the weapons expert. That's her title. Well, she's definitely an expert. <laughs> Get so good at your job, you don't even need it. You know, in all fairness, weapons expert could just mean she's really good at identifying weapons. She's often shown promo art with like a grenade launcher, and indeed if you start the game on anything except normal, you do start with a grenade launcher in your inventory. These enemies are the worst. All their attacks are fast and have really good hitboxes, they're huge. If they, if they, if they were a fighting game character, they'd be S-tier. And they now populate the latter half of this run almost entirely. Dodging them is like a huge part of getting a good time in this game. Up, hook, left, down, release. This is a lot to keep in memory. Writing things down is very helpful in speedrunning. I have my splits, they double as route notes for this game. And they're yep. necessary because of the sheer quantity of puzzles in this one. Upright hook. How can I play this game on PC? Uh, you purchase a copy of the Source Next DVD off Yahoo Auctions Japan. They do not sell this game digitally. I thought that was a question worth answering. Like, this, the, 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 the version I'm running is the Japanese PC version. And you can find that version relatively simply on like auction websites but they do not sell it like conveniently it's not expensive You gotta be the kind of person who likes having Japanese PC games kicking around for that. And I am! I think they're very charming. I think there's also an English PC version. That is not the version I have though. They are different. We did all that to get a disc. Fortunately, that's the last we see of the crane puzzle. We are done with that now. All right.
right, this hallway is pain. There are two of these guys here. They're up to no good. That was a really lucky spawn. I got a buy on that. Haha, <laughs> goodbye. Look at those goosters with their faces. Look at them go. Look at them. They're off. They're having a great time. But yeah, these, these hallways are just full of these enemies, and I have to pass through these hallways many, many times, so how kind these enemies feel like being to me has a huge impact on the run. And also on like whether or not I can successfully dodge them. Because there is like a, there's an art to it, but it's more of an art than a science. And in some cases it's pick a side and pray. Like pick a side and hope they Damn. don't yeah. swing well, at, at you. Kirk's running out of places to hide. C card. Give it to me. Oh yeah, no, actually, you're right. You can just buy this game on the PSN as well. Like, if you've got a PS3 or a PSP or a PSTV kicking around or a Vita or anything like that, you can just get it on the PSN. I think about that. I forgot about that. That's an option. It's not the fastest version for speedrunning, the PC version is, but if you just want to play the game, that's deeply unfortunate. That's one of those command grabs. Uh, that also makes you bleed, so I have to do something about that with a heal. Make this guy over here. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's the RNG coming out of this room? That's gonna get me whacked in the face. And furthermore, that also back turns you because cool game. Okay, I didn't get memed and owned over and over again. That tail whip is covers the entire room, so if it decides to do that, you're just owned. Uh baited. Yes. Success. Successful dodge. You have, to, you have to learn the situation there. Will it bust through the door? Yes, that sucks. That's RNG. Like, purely. That's just random. There's nothing you can do about that. And it creates a problem for later. Because then it will be in that room on the way back out. Ideal luck is when that enemy just doesn't break through the door at all. But... Regina, random. It looks like this door leads to the port. Hmm. It'll take a while before I can pop this open. You copy, Mike? I found the key to the port, but I got a lizard riding on my tail. I'm heading to the main elevator right now. I'll meet it at the ground level. Hurry! Huh. Sounds like we're not the only ones having problems. I'm glad you're amused. But if that guy gets eaten, we're going to have to retrieve the key from that dinosaur's stomach. You've got to save him. I've got to save them. Right, so funny quirk with this is if you rush immediately to the elevator where this event is happening, you actually lose time. I have to dodge this guy on the way out. This is going to be a pain. Oh, never mind. I nailed it. But if it's slightly faster to actually waste some time here and go through a couple of room transitions first. Go up the stairs, go back down the stairs, cut all the dodges. Those dodges were really good, by the way. I desire credit for that. And now we head back to the hallway. Because doing so is faster for arcane reasons. Ouch, that hit weird. That hit very weird. Because this cutscene is already in, like, it's like a quicker cutscene. If we arrived here in fewer room transitions, we get a longer cutscene where the T-Rex like bursts through and tries to attack Regina and it's like a whole thing. But if you waste some time by going through a couple of room transitions, you get like a shorter version of the cutscene, like you arrived late. But the distinction is arbitrary, like it doesn't matter, the guy is dead when you turn up regardless. But it's just a little thing that is slightly quicker. It's very weird. It's, it's weird that that like distinction exists at all.
Well, these dodges have been pretty good so far, actually. Competitive dodging. Clipped a couple of hits, but it's really hard to never get hit at all. There's a reason I took the extra med kits. It's not even for marathon safety. <laughs> Just normally get smacked around a good few times by those guys. My gun is still there. I'm still not picking it up. None for you. Hey there, Terry. I agree, we're calling him Terry now. Terry's gonna be having a nap there for a hot minute. Good bait. Good bait. That second one wasn't a bait, that was a bet. I guessed. But I won the guess. Oh, good RNG. Didn't come through a second time. Sweet. Think fast. I wonder what would have happened if, like, he just missed the catch. <laughs> Key falls down the back of the computer. It's like, oh. Well. She, like, flings a, she, like, flings a key card like a perfect shuriken as well. It's like one hell of a throw. What is that? I saw something like this in Kirk's personal lab. This could be a problem. This vortex must be the side effect of the third energy experiment. We can't leave this science in the way. Watch as it does mode seven to this coin. It was mode seven out so of existence. Now it belongs thing. to the Either dinosaurs. Either we find a way, or we both end up as dino droppings. Not funny. Okay, I'll pull up any relevant data on the computer. <laughs> any relevant Would data you, on the computer. Rick is going to solve this problem by logging on again. Rainbow colored disc. All right, back we go. Alright, what's the dodge here? I think they're away. Uh-oh. Nope, got away with it. Haha. -ha. Later! Alright, so check this out. This is a funny divergence from any percent as well. Normally, this room has a metal detector, which sets off an alarm when you run through. If you don't have a weapon in your inventory, it doesn't go off. And because we don't, it doesn't go off, which means you save time in this room compared to any percent because you don't have to turn off the, the, the weapon alarm. Just a really small detail that exists. Like, they accounted for the situation where the player had no weapons in their inventory. Oh, careful. That's not the solution. It's only a very marginal speed increase compared to any percent. It doesn't even come close to, like, making up the time that you would spend timing out the T-Rex fight. But it's nice that it's there. It's cute. We are now clean. That doesn't mean anything, but it's a cutscene that's there. Alright, these guys, they be spawning. Careful. Aha, interrupted by door animation. That guy's gonna be there on the way out, though. No, oh, I ran past him. Where's the second guy? Where is he? Where is he? He's in the middle. He's in the middle. Why are you in the middle? Go away. Okay, whatever. That's fine. Positioning. Positioning. This is the last DDK puzzle. And normally it'd be very complicated, but also the password is just, it's Dr. Kirk, like it's his name. I like how you put the word doctor in there. Petty speedrun grumble, by the way. There's two locks here that have to be opened with the, the B2 key chips, but the first lock requires you to put B2 key chip 2 into it. And the second lock requires you to put the first key chip into it. It's picky about the order. I'm, in, I'm perpetually annoyed that it's picky about the order. Put the second key in first. Ridiculous. Rick, I've located the main...
main generator of the third energy. Third energy. See if you can activate it. All right, now it is our turn to log on. But first, we need to restore power. A lot of this game is restoring power to things. Fortunately, that's pretty quick. Done with that, time to log on. And logged out. Can't log on without keycard. Typical. Regina hates computer and punches it, which I appreciate. Right, so here's a fun thing. Uh, Kirk ran through and like killed a scientist while we weren't looking, but he left his bloody fingerprints. You can use the bl the bloody fring fring <laughs> fingerprints. Try a sentence, Punchy. Fingerprints on the panel. It's a valid puzzle solving mechanism. For a thing we need to do later. There are multiple ways to get Dr. Kurt's fingerprints. That's one of them. The bloodstain works. You can also just get them off Dr. Kirk later, but that's slower because you have to go into a different room for it. Don't move. So we get his fingerprints off the bloody panel instead. Carving a name for myself in history with the ultimate energy source. Open your eyes, you freak. Your fingerprints. <laughs> fingerprints. Fingerprints. <laughs> you seem to have a small uh, degree of superficial intelligence. I don't, it's I'm small and under a lot of stress right now, okay? To die. Also, hey, this, like is, this is the Regina's longest hands. unbroken stretch of cutscenes. Yeah, everyone's hands in this game are just like giant Report blocks. Here immediately. Just mittens. Sorry to interrupt your lecture, Doc. You were saying... Yeah, right, blood, blood goes brown yes, when it, like, dries, dude. I was saying... I discovered how the third energy could affect space if it ran unchecked three oh, it years didn't ago. Didn't happen like I the moment the she punched the computer, the though. To transfer selective yes. space to an alternate time space. Yes. Continuum. How quickly did it brown? That was incorrect. The space Shh. was not transferred. It was exchanged. To put it in terms that even I do not accept further questions. So this is Dr. Kirk's lab. A nice touch I like is that he has empty instant noodle space containers space on his desk. From a different time. What? Yes. I came to these are they like following the ship the final in. experiment. You've seen the effects yourself. Those beasts were occupying the space this facility is located on almost 65 million years ago. Right. 65 so million years ago. Time. Precisely. I can't even do like and a funny British accent. Like I'm actually British. Done. I can't do it. Uh-huh. And how many people were sacrificed before you made this discovery? <laughs> Who cares? The numbers are quite irrelevant. Irrelevant. Let's just say that there were many. Extraordinary deaths for ordinary men, don't you think? Spoken like a true devil. A god or a devil? Hmm. I don't care about that. Only my experiment. Enough. Only one thing matters at this point. Your grand invention is blocking our escape. You need to destroy the vortex. <laughs> the only way to do that is to allow the generator's third energy levels to overload. Overload. Theoretically speaking, the third energy and the vortex will cancel each other out if they come in contact with one another. But there is one small catch. If you cannot stop <laughs> this the isn't how all Brits talk. Overload, I mean, entire region may be you know, like... Point in the space -time continuum. Then we'll just make sure to be somewhere Do else I when sound the like that? Happens. No problem. <laughs> Should I? But we couldn't even I don't know. The I kind of like it. <laughs> You're missing the initializer and stabilizer, right? Where are they? Calm down. They should be stored in one of the security level A rooms on floor B3. B3. Very good, Doc. Oh, I like right, how he says words. Understand our situation. We live, you live. Aspirational to me. Yeah. 
I am mashing an item cutscene skip because that's an item. It counts as a thing. You have to press a button. Okay. I'm all set to whip up a program that will send a stream of third energy into the vortex. I'll keep an eye on the doctor. Regina, you go find those devices and overload the third energy. Remember, they're in a secure <laughs> That's level That's Liverpool day for you. <laughs> Hold up. That whole floor How is dare you say something so funny. Okay. Let's get this situation under control before charging off. <laughs> Your voices are virtually <laughs> I'm not. I shouldn't have even brought this up. I'm not having this. The draft plans for the but do you have rights? I stumbled over them while... I have rights! Fortunately, the room where the parts are stored is not far from here. We should gather up the parts and assemble the devices. Don't be ridiculous. Regina doesn't have the technical knowledge for that. We don't even know if all the right parts are there. We'd be better off simply trying to hunt down the completed devices. It's too dangerous down there. She won't make it. It's your call then, Regina. You're yeah, the one Gail's to plan this. is to go collect What's like a choice? full key item. Rick's plan is to create it okay, manually. Rick's it. whole thing has like a mini game attached to it. It unsurprisingly takes way do. too long. Don't drop your guard for So we second. ain't doing that. Right, a dinosaur spawns in this hallway on the way out, and he's very variable. Where is he? What is he doing? He's doing nothing. He's got nothing. He was a punk. That was fine. That was efficient. Right, we're going to use Dr. Kurt's fingerprint that we got earlier to create a new key card with his permissions. This is how security systems work. Right, now we have a replica of Dr. Kirk's ID card. Woohoo! If you do not have his fingerprint because you didn't get it from the, the bloodstain, you could also get it from Dr. Kirk in that room. Like, you could go into the back room and get it off him. That is allowed. It is one mechanism to solve the puzzle. But the bloodstain is more convenient. I gotta dodge through this room again. Okay. Ow. Ooh, this is scary. Okay, that was kind of gross, but I'll deal with just not dying there. So every time you get knocked down there, by the way, you have to mash like your life depends on it, because it does. Because <laughs> if you hang around on the floor too long, you will get instantly killed. They, uh, they have a grounded instant kill command grab, so do not hang around on the ground. Boom. Ooh, yikes. Okay, the other- okay, that guy spawned on the other side of the known universe in that room, so I gotta buy on that one at least. Anyway, in a rare case of possibly paying too much attention to what would actually make sense for a facility to do, we're trying to hunt down two devices, the initializer and the stabilizer. They're right next to each other. Like, I mean, yeah, it would make sense that they would be stored together in, like, an actual facility, but you kind of expect a video game to put them in different places. <laughs> but, uh, nope, they're just, uh, they're just right next to each other. In that cabinet. Just don't get hit. Yeah. It's a great plan. But, uh, sadly, that's not always up to me. Okay, I got quite lucky with that. Whereas, uh, trying to make the initializer and stabilizer yourself, you do, in fact, have to make them one by one by yourself. All right. Oh, yikes, I commit. Oh, what? That, mm -mm. I want a referee. Offside, penalty. Let us get, let us get. <sighs> if you hit that key card like frame perfectly, you can get through this while the dino cutscene is playing. People do not get that consistently. I don't get that consistently. No one does it. In fact, I think I'm the only person who has done it. I've hit it twice. I was trying my best there. 
because it's funny. <laughs> you feel like some sort of weapon would make this easier. You're a weapon. Okay, that's like very British. Like calling someone a weapon is like an insult in colloquial English. Yeah. You're a weapon, this is mate. No weapon. This is no. There are no weapons here. That's, anyway, that's what I meant when I say those, those enemy types, all their attacks are fast and have good hitboxes. That, like, giant overhead swing, like, hit me while I was behind it. Messed up. It's kind of fraudulent. That's fine. That's the last time I have to make that dodge, so I am good for it. This is the part of Dino Crisis where you have to do a whole bunch of tech things. Put stuff in holes and turn on machines and what have you. It's one of those things that's like pretty easy, but Very forgetting it sucks. Yeah, if you miss one step in this process, you have to, like, go back and do it. Yeah. The animations are very long. So, like, I think it's supposed to be, like, visually impressive is the thing. That's the reason why all these animations are so labored. It's like, look at my big machinery and how it moves. Because this game was technically impressive for its time. Oh, yeah, actually, now that I've opened the inventory, I remembered something. Minor difference, the portrait of Regina in the bottom right corner of the screen when I open the item menu is different in the Japanese version. That's one of the only other changes that exists between the English and Japanese versions. It's different. Slightly more stylized in the JP version. This is a HD version? Nah, it's PC version. This was released officially on PC by Capcom. There are new this is specifically this is the Japanese Source Next version. Comes on DVDs and stuff. There was a time when PC ports came on disc. You had to buy them. And you had to put the disc in your computer and install them. And we have it turned on the third energy generator. We've done it. We are now going to blow up everything. Thus officially starting the end game. There's no turning back once it overloads. Then we won't look back. Crack that sucker and then go I don't know where my copy of this, like, box is. I've got Dino Crisis 2's box. I can see that on the shelf. But this is probably on a, on a different shelf somewhere, whatever. Not that it matters, I don't know, I just... Weird PC ports is like my calling. It is a subject I find interesting. The ceiling! Move it! Gail gets owned by ceiling. <laughs> you fool. What was the point in saving me? Kirk runs off. That's the last we're going to see of him. Goodbye, Kirk. Gale. I 
Okay. Just get Kirk. Hurry. Take it easy, Gail. No. Oh, take this. Tag them with transmitter. Gail. Gail. All right. The overload levels are increasing. Just a little more. Looking good. Gail. What happened to him? I don't know, but Kirk's gone. I'm gonna kill him! Yeah, what, what good does gun do against the ceiling? This is why it's no weapon. Just evade the ceiling. This the vortex is it. has vanished. All that's left is our escape. Let's go. Wait, what about Kirk? What about him? It's a miracle we're still alive at this point. Forget about him! Don't forget the mission. Remember the mission. You're not here to babysit. Sorry, but I have a conscience. I'm taking you back, now. No, you two get going. I'm going after Kirk. What? You're insane! Don't you remember our situation? The third energy can't be controlled anymore. Staying here any longer is suicide. I know. If I'm not back in 30 minutes, you two make your escape without me. Hey, do something! And finally, we do Rick's option. The only time where we do this. Gail. Regina runs up and punches him in the stomach. Thanks. That GI joke deserved it. Come on. This would normally be the branch point for best ending. But uh, this is no weapon and not best ending. In fact, I'm not even sure if you can get best ending with no weapon. No, you, I think you can, it's just significantly harder. You can. You know, you'd, use, you'd use a gun for that fight, typically, because it makes it easier. Um, it pretty much plays out like the T-Rex fight where you're like locked out of the room and you have to keep dodging him. Oh, really? Yep. I've never tried to do it without a gun. I accidentally did. <laughs> you accidentally did? Well, I was trying to do no weapon, I went the wrong path. Ah. Uh, I wanted to get the best time, I was like, eh, let's try it out. I was like, oh. Oh. Also, shout outs to Regina for okay, literally handling nuclear, like, At least not yet. uranium. It yeah, it, it needs, like, nuclear fuel. fuel. She just gets given, like, a nuclear like bucket or something. Some type of nuclear energy. Nuclear Here, energy. Put, the fuel in this. put it in this bucket. <laughs> I don't know why it makes you do this. So I actually did know why. Um, on both endings, you can still get the best ending, and this is kind of like the point of no return, I think. Like, hey, uh, yes, yes. if you forgot to go find Dr. Kirk, maybe you should go get him. Uh, this is the exact last point. Yeah. But anyway, you now can I still have nuclear fuel. That. Yeah, I could go do that right now. I'm not going to, but I could. Forget Dr. Kirk, he's gone. This is the fastest ending type we're getting here. It's the T-Rex again. Leave him to me. You just work on getting that thing fixed. We're, we're going to take care of the what final T-Rex with the power take of... This. <laughs> take this! Rick says, no, that's a weapon. We, we, this is no weapon, Rick. Have you not been paying attention? Rick! Ricardo doesn't get it at all. Do you like that? It's just like, take this, and I just run straight past it. It's like, nope. Yes, this is the final scene of the game, so time will be coming up shortly. Uh, the final boss of this game basically takes the form of a, like, lap around a race course. Run away from the T-Rex. Don't get too close to it. Normally, if it gets too close, you are prompted to fire back to, like, repel the attack. Uh, we can't do that, so don't let it get close. Just run, don't bump into any walls and what have you. I believe time is coming up soon. Yep. And time. Nice. That was pretty the good, final actually. Report of Operation Dr. Kirk. I feel good about Agent that one. The Don like, Regina. that one 
overhead strike aside, that, all the dodges went pretty well. I finished without dying. Works for me. Yeah, let's see the IGT is. Yeah, this is time with the in-game timer. Although, like, I don't know what my PB is, I've forgotten. <laughs> Well, while we're doing this, um, I, think, I think my PB's a 117 or something. Give any shout-outs you like to give or any plugs you'd like to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the run, follow me at my Twitch on twitch.tv slash punchy. I'm doing the self-promotion thing I'm allowed to. You are? Yeah, I, yeah this was fun. I run lots of horror games, not unlike Dino Crisis, but sometimes also just actually Dino Crisis. Deceased. Tom was attacked and killed by a giant reptile that was inhabiting the island. And uh, the community for this game has really picked missed. up in recent times. Cooper. If you want to learn it, now is a better time than ever, especially now that the, the door skip mod is, like, legal, as you saw. This is a recent development. It's been, like, then. allowed as of, like, two Mission weeks ago or something. Complete. Cuts 20 minutes off running this game real time. Makes it a lot faster to pick up. What's the idea? Continue. Zero. Clear time. 118.15. I... Don't want my PB as a point of comparison, but I'm going to go with that's probably fine. Probably a fine run. I think so. It felt good enough. Whatever. I thought it went well. All right. Uh, GG, thank you for doing the run punching. Uh, before we get ready for our next run, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, look forward to Maxi running RE4 coming up next. Should I be saying what category he's doing? <laughs> So we'll leave it a surprise. surprise. We'll leave it a surprise. Leave it a surprise. I thought about that from his late show. I was about to like blurt it. I was like, no, I think I think you might want to keep that a secret. Oh, I got yeah, mad uh, skills. Exactly. Mad skills. You only get that if you finish without dying. Hey. And I think it might also be under a certain time. I don't know. All right. But I got mad skills. It smashed cut to demo instantly and broke my auto splitter. But yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I have been punchy. Glad you enjoyed it. Look forward to Maxi running RE4. Yeah, we're going to be right back very quick, everyone. Uh, we have a fun run coming up. Uh, we have one more, but before we get to that, we're going to take a quick wellness break. This is the time to stand up, touch your toes, uh, get food, do what you need. It's going to be a, just a little bit for that. Uh, before we go on break as well, I just want to say that if you're watching this over on YouTube, feel free to come over to twitch.tv slash games and quick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting most weeknights around 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends around 1 p.m. Eastern. All right, we're going to be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that run of Dino Crisis. It's interesting seeing how you can beat an entire game without attacking once or using a core mechanic. Uh, that's going to be a very minor lead into our next run, because this next run is kind of one of my favorite challenge runs to watch. Uh, every now and again, you can see it, and it exists as a category, but we all know Resident Evil 4 is one of the classic horror games out there. Everyone loves it. Uh, probably one of the most popular ones that really popularized the genre. Uh, and obviously, everyone knows uh, the hello, stranger, what are you buying? And all that jazz, the merchant. Uh, we're going to be going into a category of Resident Evil 4 that pretty much removes one of the major mechanics, and it's kind of surprising that you can even beat it this way. Uh, I'll let our runner Maxi Loves explain it more, but here is Resident Evil 4 featuring Maxi Loves. Take it away. Correct. Uh, this is Resident Evil 4, but Resident Evil 4 is very well known as the first Resident Evil game to introduce buying and selling things through the, the most fantastic fellow in the game, the merchant. Um, no. No, we're not doing that. Exactly. No merchant. We... No, no sniper rifle, no TMP, no buying rocket launchers for every boss fight. This is the category where you just take all of that and you just say, no. No money, no business. The merchant will be swimming away from the exploding island with nothing in his pockets. Which is kind of a shame. But that is, that is the category. So, uh, yeah. I hope everyone is ready. To witness this now yeah, on your count uh, in five, four, three, two, one, go. Resident Evil Four. When they made this game, they just asked one guy to be like, "Hey, can you say Resident Evil Four but spooky?" 
And that's how you get Resident Evil 4. That's great. But yeah, hi, I'm two shot. Nice. We aren't playing on normal difficulty. By the way, normal difficulty is kind of interesting because you uh, take advantage of a few things revolving around DA, which is difficulty adjustment. If you don't know what difficulty adjustment is, uh, I mean, you know, it's stuff like missing shots and taking damage and dying, it'll lower your DA, which means you'll end up, you know, taking less damage and having to do less damage to enemies to kill them. And then if you play really well, you know, it goes up and you, you get your booty kicked. Um, in fact, if you play on normal difficulty and you play so well, it raises all the way up to what we call 9DA, which is basically what Professional is set out for the entire time, which is actually good and bad at the same time. There's there's pros and cons to it. But anyways, um, yeah, this is no Merchant Normal. So I imagine uh, there's a lot of different strategies. This one is extremely similar to the regular run. The first village encounter here, the big old fight. As a quick question about, I guess, assuming the obviously there's routing here, um, you're not going to be able to have a lot of the same resources entirely. Uh, so, how many extra, like, I guess my real question here is with all the fighting happening, uh, is extra ammo from any of the drops going to be more important than normal? Okay, this game is so loud that I could not hear throughout that battle. <laughs> no worries, so I, I, can, I, can, tell you, I can tell you afterward. Let me know when you're ready. Go for it, go right, for so it. I was going to ask, um, for like any of the... I guess I kind of saw the answer there, but uh, for any of the fights, uh, do ammo pickups and stuff like that really come in handy, or is like there's an RNG revolving around that? There is a little bit of RNG, um, but... There, there's also like set ammo that you can pick up, even if you have to go out of your way, like just the tiniest bit. Um, it only becomes a problem at like the castle, like that's when ammo becomes a problem. And you'll, I'll, I'll point that out if it does happen. Um, the village ammo doesn't really matter too much. Uh, it's nice to have extra shotgun ammo in the village for cabin, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, you'll definitely see a lot more inventory management and ammo management in the castle. That's when things get tight. Look, look at this cute chat. Cute chat, ay ay ay. All right, so that concludes 1-1. One -one. Very, very similar to just a regular uh, run, but things are going to get different here. I'm actually going to manipulate my DA, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, we're going to take a hit here, but I'm going to reload as well. I'm going to get a reload cancel. So knock out two birds with one stone, take intentional damage, and reload my gun. And then the rest of this uh, is pretty much the same, but there is a guy here who has been kind of griefing me. He always, he's right here again. Okay, let's just shoot him. That is not intentional damage, but now I'm going to have to take intentional damage to use a first aid spray. Now we're good for the rest of Village up until Del Lago. Essentially, the reason why we want to lower our DA is for Del Lago. He will take less harpoons. You're right, I didn't save the dog. You're right, that's, you know, I... Funny enough, I should have saved the dog, just out of principle. But it, we wouldn't see him anyways. But it would have been... That would have been question nice. potentially about the dog, because um, I know you have to do that one fight later against uh, one of the El Gigantes. Um, would the dog actually help with that or make that faster, since I know normally in runs you do use the rocket launcher? Um, on no merchant, no. But 
that's just because like the El Gigante fight has gone through a lot of uh, a lot of different versions. When this game was first being routed for No Merchants, the dog was actually used. Very, very, very helpful little companion, but um, yeah, don't don't use the dog anymore. Which is literally the same dog from one of your favorite games, like Dice's Haunting Grounds. It is. It's the white German Shepherd. Cutie. Yeah, he's a cutie. All right, that concludes 1-2. Um, something that you don't need to do, but I like doing, is actually picking up this incendiary grenade. And I'm going to use this as my running grenade now, because in Resident Evil 4, when Leon is in this running animation, he is slightly faster. So if he's holding a grenade or an egg or the single shot rocket launcher, he runs just the tiniest bit quicker. So you're going to see me switch to my nades a lot. Do a dodge there. Sometimes chickens lay eggs in this section, and I like to pick them up, but this chicken is not laying an egg. Oh well. The, the Danny DeVito chicken. Ah, give it up the egg. Oh, uh, also, I play this game with controller. There are a lot of runners who have been picking up the game on uh, keyboard and mouse, but I am a controller player. Just uh, a little bit more info. Hi, Merchant. Oh. Hi. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, it is no Merchant. It's okay. He'll come back. The no Merchant has, like like, 30 plus lives in this game. He's like a cat, but to the extreme. He just likes to play dead. All right, so usually we pick up this incendiary in the bird's nest, but uh, in no merchant normal, because we're using, you know, DA manipulation, we don't need to. It's faster to not pick it up. We're going to wait for this guy to jump over, because if you jump over early, like he just picks you up and strangles you, and that's that's not fun. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. I won't do it again. Okay, I promise. I won't. I just wanted to do it that one time. It would be funny if you had to kill every merchant to make the category valid. That would be pretty silly, huh? I wouldn't be against it, but. I want to ask uh, for some standard things that people might not know uh, RE4. Um, if I remember correctly about this run, there is a lot of uh, FPS differences and all that. Do you have to play on like, a certain type or maybe some certain glitches that uh, are tech that revolves around that? So, um, the... So when this game came out, obviously it was on the GameCube and the PS2 and like it was, it was 30 FPS. Like that's, the game was made to be in 30 FPS, but... When they came out with the Steam version, uh, there was the 60 FPS option. And this game, there is like, I don't know why, but there's so much to it that changes on 60 FPS, but they're like, it, it, it basically gives you reasoning to believe that this game was never supposed to be 60 FPS. So like, like collision stuff, like enemy hitboxes, like attack stuff and, and like, like the the amount of frames that you have to like get out of like a stun lock or like just there's like a bunch of things so but for the speed run playing on 60 fps is like infinitely faster than 30 simply because the game is just running faster <clears throat> it just runs faster all right now we're on a double uh, there are some glitch differences like there's um there are a couple of skips that you can't do on 60 FPS that you can only do on 30, and they are, uh, they're cool, but they are not substantial enough to make up the difference. 
Uh, examples would be like the Waterfall skip, um, the Salazar skip. Those are those are both pretty good examples. So this Harpoon should kill right here. Yep, there we go. That's the fast Delago fight. So now it's nighttime. This is like this is like the 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 pivotal moment of RE4 where a lot of people who were like, oh, this isn't so scary. I like, uh, you know, this is the part of the game where things get they, they get a little bit more tense. Oh, hand grenade. Oh, wait, this one. There we go. Menuing is so important in this game. But yeah, this is like the, the more tense kind of section of the village. It's nighttime, the Plagas are out. The music is a little freakier and... Gotta worry about escorting Ashley. We have a lot of mechanics thrown in from my understanding. Thank you. Sometimes those guys are are weird. Like they won't attack you at first when you try to bait the attack. But the guy in the back will and he'll he'll blow fire on you. And so like you're trying to you're trying to dodge these attacks and then you just get lit on fire and it's it's just it's just unfortunate. But yeah, the reason why I want the hand grenade equipped is because we're about to come up to the El Gigante fight. And because this is no merchant, uh, yeah, I don't have a rocket launcher. And, you know, El Gigante's got a lot of health, and we didn't save the dog, and we don't got don't got much. We got the shotgun and some nades. But that is all we need. That is all we need, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through his legs, I'm going to throw a hand grenade, then I'm going to throw a flash grenade, Gonna skip this cutscene, switch back to a hand grenade, run up to this spot right here, and throw this hand grenade directly up. And boom. How the did... hand grenade hits the Plagas. Oh. Did he just like, like bank shot into his, uh, actually open a wound, really? Yep, that, that is that is the strat. There is another strat that you can do that saves a hand grenade, where uh, you throw one hand grenade, you use the flash, and then you just shotgun him. But the timing is, like, ridiculously tight. So I go for, um, I go for the double hand grenade. It's also way swaggier. Like, it's, it's way, it's way cooler. I was like a trick shot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember who found that strat, but um, it was implemented like a really long time ago. Very long time ago, like 2018, I think. I don't like that that's a long time ago. I, I, okay, maybe it's not okay. It's not like a long time ago, but like, oh, no. yeah, I know. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to use the dog. Oh. Now we have Ashley. Yeah, now we have Ashley. She wants us to shoot those barrels on that wagon, which we'll definitely not be doing. I imagine her, um, I guess, whole style with the speedruns and play more or less the same as a regular run probably would. Pretty much, pretty much everything regarding Ashley is the same, yeah. I think maybe there, there's like only one difference in a couple of sections. 
uh, in the castle, but it doesn't really even have to do with her. It's it's more so the fact that like you don't have the usual loadout. So nothing about her actions or like escorting her is different, but it's more so like protecting her is a little bit different sometimes. But yeah, this is like the, the this is the same strat it, as as a normal run. You essentially tell her to wait, and then you tell her to follow, and it'll manipulate the AI here. This is the first uh, like AI manipulation via Ashley's commands that we do. Oh, and this guy is deciding to throw his uh, <laughs> his axe when we're only five feet away. That's fine. Hey, merchant. Sorry about earlier. He's fine. He he walked it off. Exactly. All right. It is cabin time. To kill me? This. So we're going to let Lewis kill this one guy. You can hear his death. And then we aim at him. And we throw a nade. I think that got everybody. Very good. Now we're gonna run up here. We're gonna go collect the flash nade, the incendiary, the hand grenade. Oh, the green herb, which I need to use now because this guy is rude. Stop it. There are guests. Stop shooting them, Lewis. No! So, All right, we need to throw this. For the section like Good. cabin, I imagine this had to be optimized for like literally years. It's probably like one of the most pivotal moments of this uh, the run, really. Oh, that's fine. It's all de-aiming it. <laughs> of course. Should be good now, though. So, Just gonna chill on the stairs. Or a more chill moment of the cabin, Maxi. Mind if I ask a question? It's probably loud. It's very loud. No worries, I can wave. Just like most, like, 2000s horror games, the audio mixing is just god-awful. Oh, okay. They were all dead. That's good. Hey, Lewis, leave some for me, why don't you? There we go. Oh. Good. Goodness. Okay, so Lewis is saying Leon upstairs. Which is a sign that you're pretty close to the end. Not a bad cabin. Not necessarily very good, but not bad. All right. Uh, so, question about the cabin. Go for it. How exactly are you able to like go faster in a section like that? Like realistically, it's what kill blank amount of enemies, wait for a certain amount of waves. How does it all work? Leon. Um. Essentially, Lewis needs to not shoot everybody out of windows. <laughs> that's how that works. So that's the reason why we slash him a bunch. If anyone's wondering, like, why am I bullying, bullying Lewis? Like, why am I knifing him? Uh, it's because I need him to stop. Uh, because you need the enemies to funnel into the windows so you can shotgun them at the stairs. That's the fastest way of taking them all out. But, um... You would, in a normal run, you would usually have, um, yeah, you would usually have 
four nades. Um, so you would throw one after gathering them all in the uh, in like the, the table area, and then you would throw one out of the window closest to the stairs. Uh, you would go pick up all the stuff upstairs, and then you would go back downstairs, uh, gather a lot of them in the table room, and then throw another one outside. That is essentially what you would do, because that is just going to kill the most amount of enemies with the hand grenades, but we don't have, like, we don't have all those nades, right? So we're going to take some intentional damage here. They missed. Unbelievable. Hit me. Uh, sir. We don't have the luxury of having all those nades, so... Oh my goodness. You guys are really bad. You guys need to download Aim Lab. Uh -huh. Um. So you, you only have two nades. So essentially you just gather them all up in the table and then you throw uh, the, the next one when you gather them up all on the table after you go pick up all of the stuff upstairs. Uh, so you're, I would say like the amount, uh, wait, we want to use this. The amount of kills in this run that you get from the nades is closer to like maybe tw like 15 to 20 rather than or it's probably closer to like it's probably closer to like 10 or 12 actually. And in in the regular run you would kill probably like 20 with the nades. Maybe even more. So that's like the big difference with no. Oh, wait, I got to kill Ashley. This is for DA. Got to kill her twice. Wait, because yes, Ashley taking damage and dying also lowers DA. It's not just Leon. But yeah, the cabin is definitely a lot slower in No Merchant just because of the hand grenades being, you know, lower usage. But wait. It does kind of just work the same way. You just want to make sure you, you know, don't have Lewis shooting them out the windows too often. And... Uh oh. Hey, buddy. Ah! Ah, what? There we go. Yeah, Chief Mendez does not like fire. Even though he's shrouded in it, just he does not like fire. Well, actually, I can explain that. Incendiary nades actually cause more damage on 60 frames. On 30 FPS, you would have to use 5 instead of 4 on 60, so... Not too sure why. I, I think it's just like the the amount of frames that the fire is actually actively doing damage is just higher. It's like the only reasoning behind it, probably, but... Again, you know, difficulty adjustment is very important in this category because it's on normal difficulty. On professional difficulty, there is no DA, which makes things like 10 times harder and riskier and more painful. But that is going to conclude the village. We're just going to open this cool door with the with the eyeball that we got from Chief Mendez, his, his fake eye that he uses as like a, a key card essentially. Pretty cool. Nice shot. And we will be on our merry way. Also, I don't need this TMP ammo. Lucky drop. Look at that. Green herb. I'll take it.
Wait. There's the merchant again. Follow me. He's just vibing. We're not gonna hurt him again. I promise. Um, so yeah, this is the castle. This is where you would usually buy the semi-automatic sniper rifle, the TMP, and a rocket launcher. Uh, yeah, this... <laughs> we don't do that in this category. This shot's really hard. Oh my god. Uh, so, the replacement of the sniper rifle is just the starter pistol. Yes. Oh. Uh. Which makes this... There we go, I got him. Okay, which makes stuff like that really challenging. Wait. Yeah, the sniper rifle in this game, like... It's so powerful. It's so good. And the TMP is also really good. So we, we just don't have those tools. So we have to do some minor uh, some minor changes to just small rooms like this one. Right there, I actually told Ashley to uh, to follow. And I'm using her to crank the like the cannon all the way up. Because there's a guy that comes after you, but instead I distracted him with Ashley. Follow me. Hi, merchant. Wait. Uh, this room's the same. We just don't pick up the money. So we don't need it. This is a pretty good example of when DA becomes um, Wait, a very important thing. Because in this room, these shield guys are either going to be really mean or really nice, which they are not being nice. But that's okay. We got the we got the healing items. It's all good. We'll take that. We'll take that. Instead of getting, you know, stun locked by the flails, we just got a simple grab, and that's okay. <laughs> I see we already have the chat is pre-recorded meme going on. I love it. It's a classic one. Yeah. Okay, so, Garador. Um, you know, again, this is one of those strats where Wait. we're just using what we have. Essentially, the shotgun, despite being really underpowered for stuff in the castle, we're, we're going to have to make do and just use it. Just need to be a little bit closer to the door. Um, but it's not so bad because, again, DA strats really, really helps with uh, these types of enemies. Going to reload really quick. So we're going to pull the lever. And we're essentially just going to loop this animation on him. Or not. Uh, <laughs> I shot too early. That's fine. He should die in a pretty minimal amount of shots. There we go. Okay. Not too fast, but not too slow. Matalo. So there's another cool manipulation. We leave Ashley there, and the enemies are more interested in picking up Ashley, so we can just run past them. Uh, and now Waterhall. This room sucks. <laughs> Every
every every RE4 runner will tell you that this room just straight up sucks. Um, so we're just going to hope for the best. Obviously, that strat's way different from normal. We threw an incendiary there to um, to stop the shield enemies because we don't have the sniper rifle to take them out in one shot. Right here, I'm going to do a kick just to get them out of the way. Hopefully, Ashley doesn't get picked up by this guy. That was close. We're going to reload, shoot this guy running down the stairs. And we're going to tell Ashley to crank while we shoot these guys down. Just got to you got to keep an eye on like every part of this room. Essentially, hopefully she's right behind me. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Cool. That was good. Now we're going to reload while this cutscene happens, and this cutscene actually activates a checkpoint, so we're going to reset the checkpoint to despawn every single enemy in this room. Beautiful. Now this next section, this, this next section is a little different, um, because we do have to take out everyone with the pistol. Hopefully I have enough ammo to do that. I should. My DA should be low enough where these enemies only take like five or six shots. That is more than five or six shots. Uh-oh. That's okay. We'll make do. Okay, that guy's dead. We want to kill that guy too. It's okay if we take some damage here because we need it for damage if anyways. Um, we want to get picked up. We want to get grabbed. I can't risk it though. Here, let's let's do this. Let's take a flail hit and then let's get picked up. There we go. Good. Because I don't have any more handgun ammo, I'm going to make my life easier and throw a flash. Now, because because I had to like use so much more handgun ammo than usual, this section is a little here. Hit me and Ashley, fantastic. Nice DA minips, and we got green herb. Let's just shoot this guy down. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if Ashley isn't healed here. She actually gets full health in the next section where you play as her. Does this despawn enemies? It does, okay. Now, because this is a marathon, uh, I would like to Wait, follow me. Wait. go ahead and do some safety stuff. Because even though this chapter went pretty well, like the next couple of chapters are a little messed up at times. So we're going to go pick up our first aid spray. I didn't have time to do any of this because I was I was like, I had to shoot all of those enemies maybe like two or three more times than usual with the handgun, which adds up a lot. I did not have time to pick up the incendiary or the first aid spray. Look at Ashley. She got a belly ache. Feels bad. <laughs> Follow me. 
it's okay, Ashley. I also kind of get a belly ache every time I run this much. Understood. All right, in this room, we're gonna pick up a hand grenade from this chest because we need two hand grenades for a strat later on. Wait. Hoping for handgun ammo. We got money. <laughs> That's fine. There is one handgun ammo case right here. And then there's a green herb right here we're going to take, and we're good. Hi, merchant. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to save the game. Just in case. All right. No, more money. This is the only category in, in, in RE4 where you despise getting money. Stop giving me money. They're called pesetas, I think, in, in the game. But a lot of people like to joke around and say that they are potatoes or pita. If you accidentally talk to him but buy nothing, well, you're forced to talk to him. The first time, like the first time you meet him, you're forced to talk to him. So no, it does not invalidate it. Why not buy things from the merchant? Because no. Because no. That's why. That is correct. Uh, another thing on 60 FPS that I should mention. Uh, Novistadors are worse on 60 FPS. Um, on 30 FPS, if you play this game and a Novistador attacks you, uh, it's very rare that you will get stun locked by another Novistador. On 60 FPS, it is very common that you will have literally no frames to react. It is you will get frame perfect stun locked by Novistadors and you will die. It is incredible. Not enough cash, stranger. <clears throat> What's taters precious? All right, good reference, good reference. I like it. A lot of the things you'll be watching is that they're intentional. This this category is just really different. A lot of a lot of this is actually very much so intentional. Here's another very different strat from normal. This red zealot, you usually snipe him in the head, but right there, we're gonna throw that flash grenade very specifically to blind him. Temporarily, we're gonna kick him in his back. We're gonna take a, take a hit here. And then we're gonna get picked up. And because the red zealot has so much health, the only way to kill him really quickly in this category is to just kick his head off. And the only way of doing that is having uh, the, you know, that animation of getting picked up. No idea why, but that animation does, like, so much damage. Like, you, you could sit there shooting him with the shotgun for a full minute and he won't die. But that head kicking animation, all of his health's just gone. So that is a pretty neat strat. That is one, definitely one of my favorites to show off in the category. Nice. Okay, we got pretty lucky here. Sometimes these scythe guys like to attack early, even if your DA is low. Good. Perfect. Perfect. We like to see it. All right, cool. And now we're going into the infamous maze section, where Salazar is like, oh, do you like my pets? And 
Leon's like, what? Eh. And then the cursed dogs of RE4. These are like the most cursed dogs in the series. Like, for its time of release. They really went above and beyond with how, like, disgusting the dogs were in this game. Not pet the dog in Resident Evil 4. You can save the dog. The only dog in the game that isn't, uh, you know, a host to an evil parasite. But these dogs? No way. No way. Shoutouts to Agdysis actually picking a really good time for me to be on the show. I just got done doing, like, a big old sweep of world records. <laughs> got, like, four in one month. Got Resident Evil 7, End of Zoe, Fear 2, um, Devil May Cry, and Lord of the Rings Friend King. A lot of these games are... Not similar to each other. Okay, let me just really look at this inventory management. I need to throw this away. Uh... Inventory management, as I said earlier, becomes a really big thing in the castle. Uh... I actually can't have this heal. Okay, let's go. Hopefully these guys will be nice to me. Yep, there we go. There's the whiff. Nice. All right, we're going to walk a little bit just to give these guys time. It's fine if we take damage. It's not fine if we get stun locked and can't get through the door, but it's fine if we take a hit. Here's the part where we save Ashley. Now, normally we would have a. Uh... <gasps> Oops. No. <laughs> you know, uh, normally we would have better weapons, you know, like a sniper rifle with a scope to do this, but we just have the handgun. So stuff like that happens. Um, it also makes the section where we're shooting enemies uh, a little weirder. So we're actually going to do a pretty cool strat here with the hand grenades. We're going to wait for this guy to start running. We're going to toss the nade at the floor, and it's going to kill everyone below. That is a pretty precise nade toss, actually. <laughs> that was not okay. That was not intentional, but to be fair, it does lower our DA still, so it's not like the biggest issue. Um. Especially, especially in a marathon setting. All right, there it is. There is the no merchant strat. It's it's a little bit different. The nade tosses are different, and you don't have the sniper. Uh, my inventory is actually exactly what it's supposed to be. It, well, well, wait a second. Except for this, I actually need to toss the handgun ammo. Uh. and pick the splash nade up. There we go, now we're good. Okay, so 
Ashley gets full health when you start playing as her here, so we don't need to heal her, as I said before. And this is like, this section is really strange because you don't play it for very long and Ashley doesn't really have like many mechanics. Uh, but the reason why I say it's strange is because in the original version of RE4, this was the only section that was supposed to have fixed cameras. And they're still fixed cameras in the uh, the Japanese version of the game. So, um, yeah, that's that's an interesting little thing. No idea why uh, that only made it in the Japanese version and why it was scrapped for PAL and NTSCU, but I really wish they kept it. It would have been really cool. Yeah, no, I agree. I kind of wish they had kept it. I kind of wish they had done that. A lot of, actually, a lot of RE4 runners have their Steam version as the Japanese version because um, a lot of runners like to run multiple categories. And the only way to get the amateur difficulty available is to have the uh, Japanese version. Which, yes, there is an amateur difficulty. There's amateur, easy, normal, and professional. Um, I've actually never played the amateur difficulty. Just never played a version that had it ready, readily available. But yeah, just a little interesting fun fact there. I, I know a lot about this game actually. I'm not I'm not like the the most top tier runner, but I've been running it since 2015, so I, I have a lot of knowledge. Hence why every time this game gets into like a main GDQ event, I'm on the couch. <laughs> well, now you're doing the run I'm here. I'm just like, huh? Now you're doing the run here. And now I'm doing the run here. Yeah, no, that's that funny. Funny enough, like this is the first time I've ever showcased showcased RE4 to uh, the Games Done Quick audience. So I hope everyone's uh, having fun. Hope you're all having fun and having a good week. So it was a weird question I probably could have asked, like, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes ago. What got you into No Merchant? So when when I was running Resident Evil 4 in the first place, I was running New Game Plus, and it was very fast, constant inputs, barely any time to really even interact or think. <laughs> you just do. Um, Wait. And when I wanted to switch categories, I was like, okay, well... You know, I want to learn something that's a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit slower, but also like not too difficult. And I was like, OK, I'll learn New Game Pro or New Game Normal. And that sounds like a good time. But at the time, uh, there were a few runners who were like, yeah, so no merchant can be done as a speed run. Like, this is possible. Like, we can do this now. Demon it, by the way. Um, and I was very interested because No Merchant is just like a good challenge run that I had already like done before. And I was like, okay, well, if you can do it as a speed run, like I kind of want to learn that. So, because it was also like the polar opposite of New Game Plus, you know, the fastest category going to what is the slowest category due to limitations. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's do that. Um, and so I started running it and I got like. Obviously, it was super unoptimized, but I got record using the very outdated route. Um, and then JTB, another RE4 legend, came along and was like, you know what? There needs to be some rerouting done here. Uh, so he rerouted and beat my time. And then I think at that point, a couple of other runners started running it and it started getting more optimized. And then Lion came around and rerouted again and... There was like all these discoveries and whatnot, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much how I got into No Merchant. It just, yeah, it was just good timing. It just started being routed heavily when I was looking for something new in RE4. That's always a good time. Follow me. You know, kind of like the resurgence sometimes is needed for games. Do I have enough space for this? Yes, I do. 
All right, so what you just saw, everybody, while I was uh, explaining all of that was the backtracking, the only backtracking that we do in the entire run. We backtrack to go pick up the rocket launcher from the case down there and to get the broken butterfly, which we can't get unless we have Ashley with us. So that's why we do it all right here. Wait, so we're actually uh, getting a new weapon? Butterfly. Huh? We're actually getting a new weapon? Yeah, yeah, the, the Broken Butterfly is a very powerful magnum that you can get for free as long as you have Ashley. Um, and it's going to carry the rest of the run, apart from the single rocket launcher that we picked up. And that single rocket launcher um, is going to be very important, but not as important as the Broken Butterfly. Broken Butterfly is just a massive thing for this category. So Salazar wanted to have a lava room. Really not much to say about this room. He just imported lava online. You know, three day shipping. And stuck it all in this room. doesn't even look like lava because this is 2005 graphics. It looks like Tang. If anyone's if anyone had that as a kid. Oh god, Tang. It's just it's just orange Tang. Except hot. I knew a guy who would drink a lot of Tang. You tell me how he drink like pictures of it. He sounds very hip. You like Tang? Yeah, Tang, Tang and Capri Sun. That was like the battle of the battle of the 90s drinks there. Except like I, I don't remember the Tang commercials very well. The Capri Sun ones I remember because like these kids, these kids would be like, OK, mom, I'm I'm going to go skateboard with my with my buddy, Jim. And then they would turn into like silver bullets and they would suddenly warp to like, you know, a different part of the continent. And and they would be like skateboarding in like the Grand Canyon or something. And then, you know, the mom is sitting there for like three hours thinking like, what in the world happened to my child? And then, you know, they suddenly there a silver bullet again crashing through the roof of the house and the mom is just like, oh, you kids. And it's uh, yeah, those commercials were really, really out there. <laughs> I don't Random ranting during the run. I haven't explained this room. We shoot these things before we enter the room, and then Salazar's like, oh, dang, he knew. So you don't have to, you don't have to go through, like, the stressful process of being in the room while shooting those. And then we only have three shots left with the handgun, so i got to make sure I don't mess this up. Nice. Got it. And then you can use this last handgun shot to shoot the lock. Very fast. And those are the only 10 bullets you have in your handgun, so you need to make sure you're on point with that. You do not have any other handgun ammo. Wait. And even if, I mean, if you did, you would have to lose one of the incendiary grenades, but we actually need a lot of those, but I'll explain that later. For now, we are going to do the King's Grail room. We're going to try and manipulate the knights into doing their overhead swing. Just like that, all three of them stacked up. That's good. And now, while we have the time, we're going to reload the handgun, reload the shotgun, 
Throw away the handgun ammo. Pick up the shotgun shells. Oh. We only, we only need a certain amount. There we go. Pick up the green herb and reposition. Same strat, except this time it's a little weird because sometimes... Yep, this, this guy in the back just doesn't want to cooperate. It's okay, though. Should be good? Nope. There it is. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to reload again. Nice. That was actually quite a good room. That was quite good. We take those. Another uh, wait, follow me manipulation here. Gonna run into this corner until this guy gets kind of close. Gonna do a couple of uh, quick turns, which, by the way, quick turns uh, in this game, they're they're not the usual like 180 quick turns that you would see. Uh, we like do directional turns like that. It's much faster. Egg. Egg. I was thinking about taking that, but I don't have room. Ah, okay, no Vista doors. Like I said, no Vista doors are awful. <laughs> they, they're like the worst enemy. They're actually, I would say, no Vista doors are one of the worst enemies in Resident Evil history. Straight up. They try their best out there. Thankfully, they they were pretty cool just now. We didn't get uh, the random fireball. I can't see this last one. Hello? There it is. Okay. Smooth, smooth. We didn't get the we didn't get the unlucky fireball hit. Didn't run out of handgun ammo for the, uh, the little boxes stuck on the clock tower. Quite good. Gonna use the uh, the combination of green and yellow and pick up that green herb. Which, by the way, if you don't know what yellow herbs do in this game, yellow herbs increase your maximum health. I've used uh, three so far. Um. Ow. Beyond just got shot in the face. It's not good. Uh, I used three now. Totally optional, like, you don't have to use yellow herbs to be completely, like, honest, but I'm doing it for just safety reasons. This is category is, uh, a little wild. Alright. First section where we're gonna be using our broken butterfly, finally, is the Gyarador room coming up here. But before I do that, I need to make sure I kill uh, these two guys because they will simply get in the way if I do not do that. Oh, I should use this. Yes. The DA Manip. Yeah, sh that guy shooting me was the DA Manip. Exactly. Very true. Okay. Alright. Gentlemen, what are you doing? Oh? Wow. 
Wow, that was stressful. <laughs> uh, clutched it though. See, when stuff like that happens, it's just all like it's all just knowledge. When you have to improvise sometimes, like this category doesn't just require you to like, you know, know the strats. It also requires you to know what to do if that said strat does not actually end up working. Uh, I don't need the shoddy ammo now. And of course, you know, this is the section where in a normal run, the merchant would be like, eh, 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 striker. And you'd be like, yes, please. But we do not use the striker shotgun, therefore we cannot use the Dittman glitch, the famous Dittman glitch. Which also means that there's a lot of skips we're not going to be able to do. And I will show you how we handle that in just a moment. But first, we have to take down the Xenomorph that is the Verdugo. It was not actually a Xenomorph, but it's pretty obvious to see where the uh, inspiration came from. And the reason why I just reset checkpoint, um, when you enter a boss room and you reset your checkpoint, it resets your DA back to what it was before you entered the boss room. Because when you enter a boss room, it will actually bump your DA back up. So you gotta make sure you remember to reset checkpoint, otherwise there are boss strats that are not going to work. So this is where we use the rocket launcher. To turn Verdugo into obstacles. Easy peasy. Pick up a little bit of handgun ammo and uh, first aid spray and we're on our way. Ah yes, the famous question of what is DA? So DA is difficulty adjustment. Essentially, stuff like taking damage and dying and missing shots and whatnot, that will lower your DA and the game will be slightly easier. Uh, if you play really, really well uh, and you kill a bunch of enemies without taking damage and you don't, you have really good accuracy and stuff like that, the game's DA will rise and it will thus, uh, thus the game will be harder. Um, but I'm going to attempt a skip after I take a hit here. Uh, this skip is a little weird. I've been getting it pretty often. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So essentially, like, I am just landing on a piece of that platform over there. Uh, that is, like, right on the edge. And because I'm right on the edge, the game thinks that I'm, so, like, I'm not actually on the platform. So I can just kind of float walk my way to the other side without having to destroy the boulder. I'm going to take some intentional damage here. Take one more hit just to really make sure I get this one cycle Gigante uh, fight, so... Use the first aid spray, which, yes, you heard that correctly. One cycle El Gigante. Let's reload. There we go. Let's see if I can do it. Now, this is a fairly new strat. I actually learned this just for just for this marathon run right here.
Oh, he's actually doing the stompies. There we go. Okay, here we go. Two magnum shots, two shotgun shots, spam X, climb, spam cut. Boom, one cycle. The timing there is super tight. If you if you shoot that first magnum shot too late and you don't hit the Plagas, or don't hit the Plagas, you will not get that cycle. What's my healing looking like? Okay, I should probably pick up this, uh, this herb real quick. We're gonna go ahead and take out some of these Novistadors, just to be safe. We're schmoving. We're schmoving. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a cool kill? Hey, hey, thanks, Chad. Thanks. I worked on that. Ooh, good Navistar luck there. Uh oh, I said Tar spoke too soon. Ah, someone heard me. It's the commentator's okay. curse. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, we gotta kill a couple at least. That's fine. Inventory is a little scuffed. So let's try to fix that up. Okay, that's that's good. That's not good. Why are you on this side? Uh, the body blocking. Okay. I'm panning my camera to the left and the right on purpose. When you pan your camera like that, it's much more likely that the new Vistador will do a claw attack rather than a grab or QTE attack. There's really not a whole lot you can do with no Vistadors. Like, on No Merchant, you're just... You don't have Ditman, you don't have the Striker, you're just, uh... You're just kind of chalking it up to... Like... Praying that you get good luck. So. That actually wasn't too bad. We only took a couple of hits. And we didn't get the acid QTE attack either, so I will I will take that. Alright. On. Uh, this chapter involves the like kind of underground mine section. I'm sure a lot of people remember the the, the wacky minecart ride. It's a good old time. Watch out for the bear traps. There's two chainsaw guys here. Um, I think my DA is low enough, though. Uh, what do I not need? What do I have here that I don't need? Shot ammo, probably. 
Okay. Just gotta make sure that's reloaded before we get into this room. Because if you do this fast enough, you won't get, uh... You won't get these face hugger parasite guys on you. Which is nice. I don't like that. They actually do quite a bit of damage. Even if your DA is low, they, uh, they do quite well. Quite well to mess you up. Okay, now we take the shotgun shells. We're gonna use this herb. And I'm gonna reset this room really quick just so I don't have to reopen the barrels and retake the herb. Because I might mess this up. This is minecart skip. Uh, when you don't have Ditman, this is what you have to do to achieve minecart skip. If I get it first try, that'd be sick. If not, I. I I assure you this is hard. Never mind. I'm very good at this game, clearly. <laughs> I suck at that skip, but I did it first try, so that is um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, if you don't have Ditman, that is how you have to do minecart skip. I'm surprised there's still a setup for that. Yeah, the when the original minecart skip was found, it was on Steam and it was on with with Ditman. And essentially, like the way that you do that is you go to the nearest or like the farthest right drop down animation on the minecart uh, with Ditman and a two handed weapon equipped, and you just jump down and hold up and left, and then you're out of bounds. But after quite some time runners finally found a way for other versions of the game to be able to pull it off because the only way to do the version that i just explained is if you have pure 60 fps and that's only attainable on steam the ps4 and xbox one versions are 59.9 frames per second which is a huge meme um so yeah runners were determined to figure out how to skip this on other consoles and other versions and other categories, and there, alas, you know, they found it and implemented it, and that's what it looks like. I'm, I'm quite pleased with the fact that I got the one cycle El Gigante and the minecart skip first try because uh, that strat, that El, the El Gigante strat's very new to me, and also the minecarts. Like, I, my split for this chapter is literally called I Suck at the Skip uh, because it's, the, it's like the only skip in the game that I just seemingly have trouble with. But there it is. Dunskis, that saves a minute, by the way. So pretty, pretty healthy chunk of time save for the category. If you have Ditman and you do it the original way, it's like a minute 45. If you have Ditman and you do it the way that I just did it, it's like a minute and a half, I think. So... Uh, a lot, a lot more time save if you have Ditman, but of course this is no merchants, so we we don't do that. Okay, that's fine. Archer. Oh god, inventory why? Oh. Oh, I made the cycle. Oh, let's go. Can I run past this guy? Yeah, he's he's just chilling. <laughs> it's like he didn't even know I was there. Now we're gonna run away from Salazar's big old robot statue, which we also like to joke that this is just Captain Crunch and he's chasing after you because he's very upset that you're spreading the false information 
You're you're slandering his cereal, and and he's mad that it's that that people are proposing that it cuts the roof of your mouth. It does cut so the roof of your mouth. <laughs> Intentional death. I have calluses on the roof of your mouth still, Mr. Maxi. Okay, two two intentional deaths should be good. We have to understand. You see how that knife went into his mouth? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what eating Captain Crunch is like. <laughs> At least it tastes good. Unlike it the does. knife, it does. It does actually. <laughs> but the pain is still the same. You, you can tell that your DA is low enough if that guy does not automatically grab you. Which he didn't, so... Huzzah. Oh, I guess we don't need that. Uh... I'm gonna reload the shotgun before I get this checkpoint, just in case. Let's go. Alright. So, the shotgun... The spread is awful. The striker shotgun, which we would usually have in a regular run, the spread is amazing. So um, this elevator is really difficult with the shotgun. So things might get a little messed up here, but we'll see. the reload cancel but I am in pain let's kill him kick strat god Get these two guys off. Okay. Reload. Reload. Uh, let's get out of here. That elevator was not very good, but... I expected it to happen. The shotgun spread is just really weird and it tends to mess that up quite a bit. But of course, you know, it, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Hi, merchant. Remember, reset checkpoint. Get the magnum out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get a sneaky seven in after the reload. Right there. Reload the shotgun. Boom, perfect fight. Perfect fight. Like I said, the broken butterfly carries on all of the other bosses where there isn't some type of uh, mechanic or gimmick you're taking advantage of. Uh, I don't remember which barrel here has the incendiary. Not those ones. It's got to be this one. Yeah, it is this one. Okay. Now then, uh, throw that away. Should be good. No. I have to discard this green herb. Now we're good. Boom. 
brilliant. Brilliant Salazar fight. Went exactly how it should go. And what's really nice about doing that fight the way that I just did it uh, is if you if you don't like if you don't miss any sh like Magnum shots, then uh, like this routing allows you to have a couple of extra, which will come in handy much much later. Now we're gonna do the five one island skip. Uh, this is doable on every 60 FPS version. So, well, actually, I think it's just Steam. <laughs> I think every other version you have to do the, do the old 5 1 skip, uh, where essentially you're doing the same thing, but it's just in a different jump down spot. Different jump down and climb up spot. That's a very cheeky little skip there. I'm going to have to shoot this guy before he shoots me with his rocket launcher. Hi, merchant. Uh, but that cuts a pretty good amount of time. I think it's a lot more time in no merchant than it is in other categories because you don't have Ditman. All right. Now, the reason why we needed to hold on to some nades is because in this room, we don't have Ditman to do the usual strat of skipping this room. Oh, oops, I missed the nade. Uh, so we're gonna throw nades at these guys to kill them. There we go, got it. There we go. Hello? There we are. Okay. Very nice. Okay. A little bit of a uh, inventory management there. Didn't realize that I picked up handgun ammo. And we need that spot open for this incendiary grenade. Actually going to be throwing away this as well. I can't actually I can't even pick up the green herb. I'm very limited on my inventory right now because I need all of these nades and such. All of this, uh, all of this equipment. I really only keep the first aid spray much as I would like to have more healing items. This is where the inventory management gets uh, a bit a bit tight. You can't really be picking up extra things. Which is rough. Because I only have one healing item, so I gotta make sure I don't take damage. It's, it's like that one cat beam where heavy breathing intensifies. Except it's not a cute cat. It is a nightmarish regenerative, regenerative creature. That's a word.
Uh, okay, so. Like I said, we need a lot of incendiary grenades. Uh, one of the older strats was to actually knife the Iron Maiden to death using a specific uh, interesting stunlock, but we uh, don't do that because it's slow. Instead, we're going to use these incendiary grenades. And there we go. Just like that. Nice and quick. Now this guy is going to hit me. There's really not a whole lot I can do about it. Um, but I should probably take full advantage of my first aid spray and let him hit me one more time. Just to lower my DA a little bit more. Now we're going to do the uh, the escort Ashley section of the island. Good. Retry checkpoint there is actually pretty important because it despawns one enemy. And it just so turns out that that one enemy that you despawn is also the enemy that is the farthest back in the hallway. And chances are he will not get flashed. What is that thing? And again, for those of you who are uninformed of what DA is, DA stands for Difficulty Adjustment. If you play really well, the game will get harder. If you don't play very well, the game will be easier. Wait. Stuff like accuracy with your weapons, uh, enemies killed, how many times you take damage or die, all of these things affect DA. Very important thing for this category. So we're actually going to let Ashley get picked up here. Yep, Resident Evil 4 was the first game in the Resident Evil series to implement difficulty adjustments. I'm knifing that guy just because he's rude. Wait. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> you get hit by the wrecking ball. Follow me. <laughs> wait, follow, wait, follow, wait, follow. Okay. This is also the only section of the game where you actually need your DA to be not like super low because if it's too low, the, the regenerators here won't attack unless you're like so close to them that you can't dodge the attack anymore. So you need to be able to successfully bait them into attacking without getting hit. And the only way to do that is if your DA is like not the lowest. Okay, we're gonna pick up some shoddy ammo here. Uh, another first aid spray. Just for safety, I don't need the rifle ammo game. Leave it to me, Leon. All right, and Ashley drives th this this thing. Now, if you've actually played the Resident Evil 4 Atomi Edition, you'll know uh, that Ashley learned how to drive this in college. Behind us. 
It's canon now. Oh yeah, the knife is really good, by the way. Like, when your DA is low, the knife just suddenly becomes devastating. This guy might hit me. Never mind, I got him. The suplex is quite good. Agreed. Fun facts. On the GameCube version of Resident Evil 4, in the section where you play Ashley, you can let uh, you can let one of the Ganados into um, you, can, you can let one of the Ganados into the area where the, you open the door. And if you push open the door while he's on the other side, it'll bring him to his knees. And for some weird reason, uh, they let Ashley suplex. So Ashley can suplex an enemy in this game, but only on GameCube. They, they fixed it in all the other re-releases. We're gonna reset checkpoint here to despawn that guy, and that's it. ZPZ area. Now, I don't have handgun ammo, so I'm relying on my shotgun right now, which is not a bad thing. Because we have enough ammo for it. also learned that in college. Yes, indeed. Oh my goodness, uh... I have no choice but to use some Magnum ammo. Which I mentioned earlier, you know, the routing, if you don't miss Salazar a single time with your Magnum, you have some extra Magnum ammo, so that came in really, really clutch just now. That is definitely not what you want, but if you have to do it, you have to do it, right? So, Which, speaking of ammo, I'll take that. That's a random drop, but worked in my favor. Coming up to the very, very memorable Krauser cutscene. Which, uh. 
which I believe there is still a bounty for somebody figuring out how to skip this, but there's like, there's no way. That'll never happen. But. Been a long time, comrade. Krauser. Krauser. The dead in your quest two, two years ago, is that what they told, told you? you? You're the one who kidnapped Ashley. No, catch on quick as expected. After all, you and I both know where where we come from. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? The Sadler, the, the sample Sadler developed. That's all. <laughs> the Sadler sample developed. Leave Ashley out of this. Oh, I needed her to buy Sadler's trust in me. Like you, I'm American. You got her involved just for that? You got her involved just for that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've I've heard this so many times that I need to just I need to do the worst voice acting rendition possible to make it interesting for myself. So. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to this. Oh, for umbrella's sake. Umbrella. Almost let it slip. Enough talk. Enough talk. Enough talk. Die, comrade. comrade. Well, if it isn't the bitch in the red dress. Looks like we have to up hand here. You may be you able to prolong your life, but it's, but it's not, not like you'll be able to escape your inevitable death. Lizard Leon, who I know. You knew each, you knew each other? other? More or less. Maybe it's, about, Maybe it's time about time you told me the reason why you're, you're here. here. Maybe some Maybe other time, time, Leon. You have my number, don't you? No, I don't. Wait, stop. Add me on Facebook. Please, I'm lonely. <laughs> Yay. It's over. Now we can... Uh, this is the movie now. This is literally already the movie. Like this, this, this came out. This game came out after the movie, so they literally just ripped this. Bravo masterpiece! Thank you, thank you, thank you. If I could get up and bow, I would. But we're still, we're still going fast here. <laughs> Facebook. Sorry, I MySpace. This is 2005. I forgot. I wonder what Leon's MySpace page would even look like. <laughs> RE4 abridged. Yeah, I don't know why, like, Capcom haven't reached out. You know, I should be voice acting. Put Leon in RE9 and I'll voice act him. Easy. Oh, right. This is a boss fight coming up. This is Bono. Um, his real name's U3, but we call him Bono. Because of, you know, Bono from U2. But he's U3, so he's not Bono, he's Bono. There's lore, I promise. The the cutscene that I skipped, essentially... Uh, Bono, like, blasts through the wall. Uh, and you just have to imagine, like... Bono screaming, hello, hello, as soon as he busts through the wall, and that's the lore. He is Bono. Please don't touch me. Uh <laughs> just, just got jump scared. Okay, I have six incendiary grenades. Uh, which is enough to kill uh, E3. But first, we got to do this cool hand grenade strat. 
Not sure why, but the hand grenade's explosion goes through that wall, so you don't need to go all the way around to hit that switch. Uh, and here we are. To ensure that this works, I'm going to die intentionally. Which we actually got the best RNG here. He did the grab attack first, which is which is good. Um, and now we should be good to go. He's, he's doing, he used dig. You three used dig. It was not very effective. Oh, wait. There we go. Inventory management shenanigans. Not bad, not bad. That was, uh, that was pretty standard. Uh, I don't know why, but incendiary grenades are just really good against you three. Uh, Definitely a lot faster than trying to kill him with like the Magnum. Um, so that is the preferred strap. But of course, you know, remember, take that intentional death. Make sure that your DA is low. Because if not, it takes quite a bit to kill him. Even with the instant here grenades. But that is the end of Bono. Now we're moving on to... We're, we're going to say hi to Krauser again. And there's only, like, a one difference between a regular, like, you know, new game category and no merchant. And I will try to show it off. It's a little bit RNG-based. If, if I don't get the good pattern, like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. But if he gives me the good pattern, it'd be cool to show it off. All right. So that's normal. It's a normal strat there. Uh, grenade? Not grenade, TMP. Now you got me. Oh, whatever, it's fine. This is why I pick up a lot of heals. Gonna need a lot of those for 5 4. Here we go. Give me the good pattern. Yeah! What? Oh, fine. Usually when you knife him before he jumps up, he starts attacking you, but this time he was like, no, stop. That hurts. <laughs> I'm going to do a 10-foot backflip and throw grenades. Hello? Get down here. Thank you. There we go. So he gave me the good pattern, but for some weird reason he jumped after I hit him, which doesn't usually happen.
Which in that case, you have to do exactly what I just did. You gotta wait for him to jump down. And you, you never really know when that's gonna happen. Sometimes he throws like one or two nades and jumps down. Sometimes he gets out the TMP and then jumps down. Or sometimes he does both, like you saw. What is it that I fight for? I'm fighting for chat. That's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for you. And not the merchant. Prepare for your not fighting for him. Leon. All right, here we go, Krauser fight. Um, the amount of damage that the knife does is uh, quite a bit on Krauser. So that's what we're going to use. Really easy to learn how to do the stun lock, by the way. This is not... Uh, this is not something that is, like, difficult to learn. Anybody could do that. But it's fun making Krauser look like a fool. Genuinely. All right. We're going to make a save here. Just in case. This is 5-4. Um, every RE4 runner will tell you that this is another chapter in the game that just, it sucks. It's, it's rough. You got, you know, 3-1, 4-1, 4-4, and 5-4. Those are all very difficult chapters. It's also insanely loud. It's got sick music, though. That's... That's always nice. This guy's gonna shoot me. Yep, he got me. Alright, that's fine. Uh... Yes, Nade. Hand grenade. Uh, normally, you would have an incendiary grenade here to take out the uh, bottom turret guy, but we're going to use a hand grenade instead. We're going to bait out this attack, hopefully get by him. Mike? <laughs> okay, sure. Um... Headshot. Double kill. Killing spree. Okay, I'm done. Uh, this is good. Mike actually blew open this hole, which makes it a lot easier to traverse over to the other side. So, good job, Mike. Oh, God. Oh. Uh. Yep. Yep, of course. No, Mike does. You do. You helped enough. Don't don't do it. Oh my God. Okay, fine. I guess I could reload my guns. Multi kill. Unstoppable. That's fine. I'll actually. I'll I'll take some hits here. That'd be preferred. Yeah, actually hit me. I need to take a little bit more damage. Hit me one more time. Thank you. <laughs> I 
may not do the best impression, but it's not bad. I'd say it's not bad. Alright, so that's one of the more stressful sections. That uh that can be really rough. It was it went pretty well. All things considered. I probably didn't even really need to take the intentional damage, but I would like to make sure that the the Sadler fight goes according to plan. No. <laughs> Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> we need, dude. I love the the Halo announcer. That guy's so cool. Okay, we're gonna mag them. This guy. This guy's gonna hit me once, and that's all right. Like we we don't need to worry too much. You can tell, like, the enemies are, like, whiffing super hard now. That's how you can tell the DA is probably low enough. You thought it was Unreal Tournament? Oh, uh, well, that one, too. I mean, they're both great. Both great. What's this guy gonna do? He just did a sidestep. Does that does that mean Ashley's gonna run towards me? Yeah, okay. That works. We'll take that. Yeah, let's make sure we have a full fully reloaded shotgun, fully reloaded magnum. Full health. Let's go, Sadler time. Uh, so yeah, we don't have the Killer 7. We don't have the rocket launcher. So we're going to have to do this a little bit more old school. We're going to do two Magnum shots and a knife stab. And we're going to try and loop that as many times as we can to get as much damage as we can. If you shoot him with the Magnum uh, three times, you can't get a stab in. So you gotta make sure you don't do that. Okay, we're gonna run over here, turn around. Get that back eye. Nice. And now we're gonna do a uh, a reload cancel using the grenade. Beautiful. Oh, missed a shot there, but that's okay. I'm actually going to shoot three times with the Magnum here. The reason why is because I had a feeling that it was going to do just enough damage to make Ada drop the special rocket launcher. So now we're going to discard the shotgun to make room for the special rocket launcher to be in that spot. And just like that, easy peasy. As you can see, I had a lot of shock or Magnum ammo left over. Uh, so 
if you play if you play the route safe and do the the right strats you will you'll be very very set for saddler even if you miss a bunch of shots or mess up like you're you're gonna be fine but that was saddler no merchant saddler um honestly a lot of this stuff i i genuinely think is a great challenge not just for like speed running like if you're interested in doing no merchant as just a challenge run i would suggest it it's really good it's not too difficult but it's also not too like it's not too uh too easy for for uh for experienced players Oh yeah, by the way, if you hold down the triggers, you do like cool flips and stuff. <laughs> uh, you do super cool flippies. Yeah. Yeah. But GG's time is coming up right now. GG. You can watch the ending here, but good run, good run. Yeah, that felt really good, actually. Felt very good. You also pretty underestimate. Uh, you got a one fifty six fifty eight. Come on, let's go home. Sounds like a great idea. Wow. Mission accomplished. Okay. Right, Leon. Not quite. Yeah, it's, That's it's pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good, I'd say, right? That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some um, overtime? <laughs> Sorry. Somehow I knew you'd say that, but it doesn't hurt to ask, you know. So, who was that woman anyway? Why do you ask? Feels good. Come on, tell me. It's good. She's like a part of me I can't let go. Take a part of me you can't let's let go. I don't have her number. She doesn't add me on MySpace. I see her every other video game in the series, but I still love her. I can't love anybody else. I'm Leon. I'm a lonely, lonely man. Uh, <laughs> they need to fix this, dude. Leon tries his best out there. <laughs> I mean, you played RE6. Yeah. <laughs> We can also watch, I think there's like an ending after the uh, the credits. We're gonna see the IGT, but good run. Yeah, that was good. The IGT, well, okay, so the IGT is really bad. It's just the RTA. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, this, this game's We even game still, time. if you wanna see it, you're more than welcome to. Um, is this where I do my outro spiel? Uh, yes. Haha. <laughs> uh, Philip, if you have any shout outs you want to give, feel free to give them as well. Uh, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, definitely follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Maxi Lobes. Stream every day except for Friday. Um, as I mentioned earlier in this run, I, I just got done doing like a bunch of world record attempts for games. I just got back Devil May Cry. I got back Resident Evil 7's End of Zoe. I got back uh, Fear 2 and Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Probably going to work on some other games too, but I've just been on a roll. And this is just in the past like three weeks, so. Uh, All I, right. I have been on fire, so. Twitch.tv slash MaxiLibs. I also have a cool YouTube channel that has a bunch of cool speedrun documentary stuff, things that I've been attempting the past yeah. few months. So if you want to sub to my YouTube, I'm also MaxiLibs on there. All righty, thank you once again, Mr. Maxi. And that being said, uh, we are going to be wrapping up our show for the night, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. I thought it would be a fun idea to have no be the theme for the night. So uh, if you did enjoy that idea, we do uh, fun shows of horror every two weeks on Speedruns from the Crypt. I have been your host, Ikdysis. Uh If you want to ever check me out, you can find me pretty much everywhere under that name these days. I stream on Twitch. I talk about ideas on things like Twitter and all that. So if you want to check that out, you can find me there. Anyway, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode. But until then, see you next time and have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. As well, we'll be going on a raid. So please join us for that. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs>